All right, so friends, welcome. We are doing another coaching session. This is, uh, again, I don't coach. If you want to get a higher coach, uh, Mason Clark's great. I mean, Todd Anderson's a lot of great coaches out there that honestly are much cheaper than they should be because I, I don't I don't know why, honestly. Nathan Storer coaches for like $70 an hour. He's a world champion. But anyway, so we're hanging out, doing a little coach session here. We went with Airball previously in Pioneer. And this is Jay. What's up, Jay? Hey, what's up, guys? And Jay was in town uh, in New York and we kindly came out, come hang out for, for a day or two. Help with a lot of computer stuff, which is great. Jay built my new computer, which is really, really cool. And uh, want to do a little coaching as well. So limited is the focus today. And uh, very similar to the one that we did with Airball, where we're going to go over uh, Jay's kind of profile as a player. I'm going to build, build a bit of profile before we start. And then we're going to do a draft and go through the draft and gameplay, going over coaching and the usual stuff. Cool. So Jay, tell us a little about yourself. Just, you know, a short little, uh, your history of magic and... Uh, a little, little, little sure. So my first experience of magic was probably 25 years ago, back when it was type one, type two. Started a little bit in high school, dabbled around a little bit. Never played seriously. Had a had a few decks. Just you know, dabbled around with with the after school club. Kind of walked away from it. Uh, got into Yu Gi Oh for a while. Yu Gi Oh was fun. Yu Gi Oh has become turn one, 15 minute turns. It's not kind of my thing. Got back into magic about four or five years ago. Mainly a commander player now. But I want to um, expand my horizons in other formats. I watch a lot of limited content. I was like, I want to get better at that. I, w- I want to be able to play that format or be able to go to events and be able to draft and not get not get blown out every time. Sweet. And then so what's your, what would you say your current skill level or experience level in limited is right now? I think my – I understand the concepts of magic. I understand how to play. I don't do very well about drafting a deck. I think, I think the drafting part is the hardest part. If you were to give me a draft deck that's good, I can probably play it to be reasonably successful. But giving just doing the drafting part, that's hard. Okay, so we're looking at in the draft itself, uh, which obviously is a challenging thing. And I think limited, you know, I said this in the with Airball also, I think limited is really, really important if you want to get better at Magic as a whole. I think that good limited players are just naturally good at the game. Uh and- and then that's kind of why I wanted to do limited with you from the, watching that other video and hearing mm-hmm. that. I said, okay, if I want to start another, if I want to start and get better outside of commander and be, you know, a more serious player, limited is probably the place to start to get that foundation. And then if I want to go in other formats, it's an easier transition. Yeah, foundation is a really good word. I think that like if you're good at limited, you're just good at magic, you know. And a lot, conversely, in constructed, you can kind of just learn one deck kind of like, you know, brute force, memorize the routines for the deck or whatever, and kind of just play it and be proficient at it, but not be good at the whole, the whole, right. whole and, I, and I like the variety of limited, like every draft is a different, it's a different deck, it's almost a different game, you're not playing the same deck over and over, like every time you draft, your deck could be totally different than the draft before, and it might play completely different. Agreed. I, I love limited. Anyway, don't get a sell it to me. I love limited. So cool. So um, we don't want to this a little bit, but so far, uh, let's start with uh, with weaknesses. So what do you think your weaknesses are when you are playing limited, uh, be it in the deck building portion or drafting portion? I think in deck building, it's picking cards that work well together, and a lot of that is probably doing more prep if I want to play. If I want to get into limited, more like learning about, you know, in the set, what are the mechanics are, what are the archetypes, you know, what are the color pairs. Probably learning more about that, but then. Looking at 15 cards or how many ever and being able to pick, hey, what card works best of what I have? Okay. And then in the game itself, I think I'm st- when to attack and when not to attack. I'm better at it. I think I've gotten better, but it's still a, an area where I can use a little coaching of, okay, here's where you turn your card sideways. Here's where you might want to stand back. Okay. And then what do you think your strengths are? I think strengths is, I mean, I think I understand the basics of magic. I understand how to play it. I mean, I, so, so I don't think, I think that um, I can analyze a situation well if I'm, you know, if I have time to think about it or if I'm given the cards, it's getting the cards to get there is, 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 is the struggle. Okay. And then lastly, goal. What's your, what's your goal? You know, if you're, you know, obviously we all, we're always stepping up in many different ways to the, the highest possible goal. Be winning, winning, I would like to get to the point in the next two or three years where I can go to, to an uh, um, RCQ and actually do well. Okay. Sweet. All right, so what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to fire up a draft. We're going to do, do a quick draft. So a quick draft, of course, is the, the bot draft in Arena uh, where you are playing with um, – you're drafting with five with, – with eight – five – with seven other bots. So uh, it's not a great, you know, a pro- a example of what a, a truly real dynamic draft looks like because when you put eight people together and say, hey, make a bunch of choices, their choices are very varied because people are just – 
Right. The bots kind of right. follow an algorithm of what card they're going to pick. Correct. So so there, it's not, not as good of an experience, but the strength is that it is completely untimed. So we have all the time in the world to talk about picks, go through whatever, whereas a regular deck can be a little more uh, uh, stressful as far as picking a card. We're talking a lot. So, uh, and I think that also for the purposes of, of this of this, uh, of this this coaching exercise, doesn't matter that much. You know, realistically, we're focusing on uh, what we're doing and going from there, and that's pretty important. So we're going we're to fire through a draft, and then we're going to, of course, play the games as well. And there'll be a lot to learn in both sections. I think that um, Maddox really hard. And one of the things I, I kind of realize when I do these coaching sessions is that the things that I take for granted, uh, you know, I've just been playing, playing Magic for 20 years, you know, longer than that, honestly, at this point, um, you know, and I kind of forget how hard Magic is. Uh, and we're going to experience that. So let's uh, fire a draft and uh, get right to it. And there are a lot of plays that work well in a multiplayer game that don't translate to 1v1 very well. Like the one, one, like a way you play something in Commander might be completely different than you play at 1v1. Yeah, I think it's also just a much more focus in a 1v1 game of like playing well. Where like in a game of Commander, it doesn't really matter what you do. Right. You and and also in a game of Commander, in 1v1, you can't hide. In a game of Commander, you can kind of be over there, do your own thing, kind of stay under the radar a little bit. People leave you alone if you're not a threat. In 1v1, you only have one opponent, and your goal is to beat that opponent. So you can't kind of hide and kind of stay on your side. If you don't play your game, you're going to lose. Right, which is honestly why I don't like Commander very much. And I like, obviously, one-on-one -on -one magic is because, for me, Commander gets confusing because the the incentives are are very unclear. It's sort of like, well, in 1v1, I, you're the only person here. I'm going to beat right. you. We're gonna, I'm going to try to win this are game. Are we trying to have fun? Are we trying to come in? Are we trying to have fun? Are we trying to win? Right. And the politicking get kind of annoying. In 1v1, there is no politicking. It's here's my opponent. I gotta, I'm right. either going to win or lose. I know what you're trying to do. You know what I'm trying to do. And we're very, very clear about it. So, cool. So, let's uh, get the shuffle fired up. All right. So, we're just going to fire through here. We do have our draftsmith on. Obviously, you can dial yourself on for free on top.gg. But basically, we're going to go through. I'm going to have you look at the back. Tell me what you take and why. We'll go from there. Maybe I should turn draft with off for this, actually. It's a little too... I, I'm going to turn it off for this, actually. So I don't want you getting uh, any cheat codes here. <laughs> so we're going to be doing this. Uh, and, of course, we have time to look through the packs and stuff. So basically, how it's going to work is you're going to look at the pack. Tell me what you want to pick. And most importantly, why. I think the most important thing... Honestly, it's funny. I think that this happens. You know, we're discussing Commander a bit. Um, the most important word of magic is why. If you want to actually get better. You know, is having a reason for everything that you do. And the Commander games... Uh, the why is often there is no why. Oh, yeah, I did this thing. Okay, cool. I'm gonna play this card. You know, like and yeah. you know, so uh, I think that uh, intent is very important. So take a second, look at the back, and uh, tell me what you're thinking about what you would like to take and why most importantly, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. So so let's ask a question. In pack one, pick one. Obviously, this is this kind of builds the fundamentals of what you're gonna do with mm -hmm. that deck. What are you really looking for? Is it always to find the like the rare, the mythic, if there's one in the pack, or is it just to find a card that you want to build around? What, what's kind of what's kind of your thoughts on when you look at your first pack, first card? I know that kind of sets the tone for the entire draft, but so what are your kind of, what do you, when you go into it, what are you really looking for? So I'd say it's very important to say that the the first pack itself does not set the tone. It's the first few packs. I would say the first like four to five picks of your draft should be a, a phase I like to call looking for something to believe in. Okay. All right, so... You want to maximize your power level, but also maximize your ability to get into the right lane as well. So, for example, it's a pretty good rarest pack. It's not like a, a, a crazy pick, honestly, you know. But just because we take that green-white rare doesn't mean we're locked into green-white rabbits. You know, if we get past a cool black card and then a good black card, you know, we want to kind of speculate for our first few picks, kind of get a feel, see what's open. And sometimes it'll just be open. We'll take a green-white card, take green-white cards the entire way, have a great deck. A lot of times it's not. Where it's not open, you can kind of like, okay, right. well, maybe green white's not open here, but black is. Oh, look, blue's all, all a little bit open too, and so on and so forth. So I think it's important not to marry your first pick. I think it's important to really understand that, like, it's much better to be in the right seat for something than to have, like, you know, a few good cards to start, kind of just pushing from there. Really, really common thing that happens among newer players in drafts and less experienced players is they take a good rare and their blinders are off, you know, their horse to blinders on. So they try I'm, to build, I'm I've white. got this rare and I've got to use it, so I'm going to build my entire deck around trying to. And like, if I it. pick the, the green-white, which is probably the best card there, I get blinders, and now I've got to play a green-white deck. Right. And, and ignore other cards that could be, hey, now this opened this, which is actually better than what, right. what my green-white card is, but I'm blinded in the green-white, and that's what I'm going to play. And sometimes it will just work. Like, yeah. it, oh, it is open, lucky you, and you just you just blinders through the entire draft, end up with a good deck. That's kind of like some of the complaints about Bloomberg a little bit. It's, it's kind of an on-rails set where each archetype kind of just does, does, does its thing. And if you just take every card that's rabbit on it, your deck will end up being fine if it is at least you know, somewhat open. Yeah. Uh, but 
I think it's really important to look at it from that perspective, though, where you're you're trying to find the open lane, and the really good drafters are the ones who can kind of like read the feel of a draft. So, oh, see, there's a fifth pick uh, card in this card that's not we're not playing, but that's a really good card. It shouldn't be there at late. Why why is it there? Maybe you can speculate on that. It kind of it's like laying, it's planting a lot of seats. Not all your trees are going to grow, right. you know, but you want to plant the best seats possible. So, uh, but yeah, I think it's a pretty easy pick, honestly. So yeah, have, it's I, I think the two two for for two there with that's just. I know enough about this set to know that's a really good card. Yeah, it just two, it's great. race stats, obviously. It's 2 to your reach, vigilance, tax, plus counters on things, can draw cards. It's just like a, one of those really, really good two-mana rares, obviously. As far as the rest of the pack, the cards are interesting. You know, the Wolverine's okay. It's fine. That, uh, if if the 2-2 two, two wasn't there, the 5-4 is the place I would look. I mean, a 5-4 five, for 5 is a pretty decent card. It's got some relevant abilities. Yeah, I think that uh, if, if this rare wasn't here... I think it's kind of weak back, honestly. I think the Wolverine's fine. The duo's also really good, too. Uh, That's one of, one of the better commons in green. Yeah. Uh, the ability to kind of push through, uh, giving Vigilance, it plays well in Frogs, Rabbits. It's just like, right. plays well in basically any creature. Because the, the duos are all commons that have two creature types and right. kind of show you what an archetype might do. Right. But, yeah, I think it's easy, easily the rare, obviously. And it's also important to make a note of what you're passing. I think that people do get a little bit over-wrapped up in this. So they say, look, well, I pass four good black cards. I'm not going to take any black cards. It's like, well... If black's open coming this way, you're going to get a pack of it this way, a bad pack of it this way, and another good pack of it this way. You can just be black. It's fine. You right. know, like, so, But you should be aware of what you pass up. So we're passing you know, a good red card, a few good green cards, a uh, few good white cards too, honestly, but whatever. Whereas so you're saying another thing is look at what comes back around. So if some of these cards come back around in a couple of picks, you're saying look at that? Well, it's more so just like knowing that I I've passed some good red cards. I've yeah. passed some good green and white cards. You know, so if I have a close pick next between a blue, a good, a really good blue card or a decent green card, maybe I can be a little more inclined to the green card. It's it's all just like, it's all just hedging basically. So take yeah. the rare. This is why we did we did a quick draft because we can talk. <laughs> right, and, and then I figured that's so we didn't have a yeah. minute and a half time right. frame. All right, so pack two rolls around. Take a peek at it and let me know what you think. And while you, while you're while you're thinking, I'm gonna talk a little bit. So Byron, right, of course, my name is Jim, Promotion Player for the Content Creator. Hit the follow button. If you like this content, if you like these uh, these, these draft, uh, so these coaching videos and stuff, uh, and coaching streams, uh, let me know in the comments. Obviously, leave a like and let me know your thoughts. And of course, the Duskborn full set review is going to be tomorrow, 11 a.m. Every card constructed, limited out, everything else, as well as 10 new brews the following week, bronze the following week, and everything else. So I see two rabbit cards here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, hop to it and rabbit response. Mm-hmm. So hop to it just creates two tokens for three, and then this, then the other one lets you scry if you control rabbit. Probably hop to it's the better card for for. I mean, it puts two bodies on the board. Um, no, that's at least in in white that goes with rabbits. Um, other cards here. Oh, it's three. Okay, so it creates, put it three bodies on the board for three mana. A little rabbit, wouldn't you rather have? A and rabbit? the the first pick we had kind of feeds into that, so it's probably the best pick there. Is is hop to it. Right. So your first job is we get pick best pack, but get past pack two. Look at the cards in your colors, right? You already have a, you already have a card of colors. Doesn't mean we're, doesn't mean we're necessarily locked in a green white, but we should, we're going to start there, obviously. So right, look, sure. at, look at the green white cards, right? So hop to it is great, obviously. It's and three. hop to it seems better than the other rabbit card over there. The um, correct. Yeah, and honestly, also, this card plays insane with the, with the archer. You got archer on two, hop to it on three, attack, pump all your tokens, which is insane. So, great curve, powerful card, pretty pretty solid-looking pick here. Response is a card that is good in the rabbit deck, but I think you're right that hop to it is better. And this is a real important part where you're looking at sort of the ABs of limited, where, like, if you have seven rabbit responses and no creatures, this card's terrible. If yeah. you have seven hop to it and no rabbit responses... Hop to it's still a pretty good card, but Hop to it realistically is three one ones. You right. need some, you want some synergy or help there to make them actually good, which the Rabbit deck is good at doing uh, with cards like right. Rabbit Response and the Archer. Right. Rabbit R- Rabbit Response does zero on its own. It needs rabbits on the board. Correct. Hop to it puts bodies on the board on its own. It doesn't need any other card to to, to function. Correct. Uh, and, then, and then the only other green cards here are the Root Weaver, which is a mana dork, which is not going to be as good in a more aggressive focus with Rabbit deck because you're looking to just put things in play, attack, right? And then Quote Cultivator is also, it's a Forge card. It's pretty off-plan uh, by, like, a lot. Now, so the first thing you do is look at the cards in your colors and then take a peek. Okay, well, what else is here? Any other cards jump out at you? Not really. It's a pretty bad back, honestly. No, uh, there's nothing that hopped to it, jumped out at me in colors. But out of colors, there's really nothing there that says, hey, I would want to change colors or add a different color card. There's nothing, like, jumps out at me that says, hey, that's really good. Let's, you know, 
let's take it. I think I think the the own color picks the best card there. Right. So this is another just super clear pick. I don't think this is remotely just even debatable. So take hop to it and uh, jam it. Our little buddy's gonna get eaten alive. And now we get to pack three and take a look. Let me think. Fried rabbit with cottontail sauce. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so that's a frog card. The green's a frog card. We got some we got some blue. Not a not a great pack. This pack really. sucks, yeah. <laughs> so this is where this is where I say I would struggle. Because okay, so we got two cards that are rabbits, then we got this that has none of none of its rabbits. What's the where what what would you go with in a pick like this? It's not a very good pack, but what's what's probably good here? So this pack's terrible. Uh the cards that are on color, if it's rare, it's unplayable, it's not worth reading. Uh Polyops is a very, very good green card. It's playable in any green deck. It's obviously better in frogs. It's it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a very high pick in frogs and then just good otherwise. Uh and then I guess okay, this is this is a white card technically, but not that exciting. Okay, yeah, so so, so Polly whips a, a fight is a, it's a bite spell and it's a fight spell or a bite spell so it's a bite it's a bite spell. yeah so it's a yeah it's good in the frog it's deck a, a double bite actually double bite it's good yeah. in the frog deck because it does the one less mana for each frog but you're right for a, a bite spell for four a double bite spell for four is not terrible in any deck that can play green right so and then we have aside from that as far as like good cards in the pack I mean like Nightfisher is it's a, a fine card and an almost unplayable archetype that, 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 that's that's kind of some extra info where like you know, we were discussing the difference between, like, just being good at drafting versus, like, kind of knowing the set a little bit. Not because that's important if you want to be really good at a format. Right. But as far as just, like, general drafting skills go, like, you know, this card is good. You know, if you draft a lot, you know that blue-white birds is, like, just terrible. It's, like, almost like not even a deck, really. But yeah, the card's a 4-5 flyer for 5 is obviously reasonable, you know. But sure, it goes fine, too. It's a removal spell in blue. So there are some good blue cards here. And blue is, you know, one of those colors. But... Doesn't really play super well. The cards already have right. So a lot of what good flexible drafting is is looking for your off ramps. Okay, so that's kind of where this set falters a bit. Is that there aren't a lot of off ramps. That's where kind of the, the, the criticism comes in. Where once you have two rabbit cards, what's your off ramp? Like what? What? Right. What and other decks? So wants you're kind of right now. You're almost locked in. Not locked in, but you're you're focused on rabbits. And when now when you see a pack of this with no rabbits in it. What's your backup plan, kind of thing? Right. So, like, you, you're look, you're always trying to look for the the crossing points, you know. So, what what cards work well in multiple decks? What cards? What cards? What, what kind of card can I take that will be uh, give me a widespread of possible outcomes rather than a linear one that only has one outcome, right? right? And in this set, in general, this is a pretty linear set where each color pair kind of has its own little path to go on. Right. There is crossover, um, you know, in this pack, for example. Um, I mean, like the cleric is like a flyer could go into your blue white b b b bird deck in theory. It's also much better in black white for the life gain stuff. Sure, it's a bat. You know, um, the bell and crier is a two one easy to draw discard. Obviously, it's a frog. So if you bounce it with the frog stuff, you could do that. Right. It also plays decently like, like a blue black deck. We we're trying to get threshold, yada yada yada. So right. there's not a ton of, of overlap here. Uh, the the, the captain's okay. Uh, the mouse mechanics is all about targeting your own creatures. Right. Uh, these cards don't really do that, but if you were like red white aggro, the hop to it would be fine. You could maybe splash the archer. Not very exciting. Uh, and the blue cards don't really jive either because like blue decks typically don't have a lot of creatures in them. So a card like hop to it is like it's okay, it's fine, but like, but let's get whatever. So I think that mostly here, you know, you're looking for some speculations. Realistically, polyop polyop's just a great card. Yeah, we're like that's, gonna, that's that's probably the best card there. Yeah, we're likely to have a few a few uh, frogs that are like anyway. And even if we don't, this card still at least it's fine. It's reasonable yeah. enough. A double bite for four is not the end of the world, even if you don't get a mana reduction. Right, and there isn't anything else here that's worth taking. These two blue cards in an absolute stone cold vacuum, you know, of not knowing the good colors in the set because this set blue and red are pretty bad. Uh, both these cards are more powerful. And I, I, I wouldn't fault a, a drafter who hadn't played Bloomborough to, to take one of these. I think that would be a fine pick in, like, a vacuum. But we know that Blue's not very good. And we'll just kind of stay the course here also. Yeah. So no reason to deviate just yet. So there's a wallet. We get past the back with this. A much better pack here. Take a look and let me know what you think. And again, folks, while, 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 while Jay's thinking, uh, like I said, set review. We got 10 new brews happening. Uh, early access trip's going to be uh, the following Wednesday. It's going to be on the 18th for 10 New Bruce. Uh, that'll all be up on YouTube starting then as well. Nicole and I are actually going on vacation. Uh, on the, we leave on the 21st. 
We're going, for, we're going for, to do Disney for a week. And if you're going to be in... Wrong week. That's screwed up. You're a week later. You leave on 28th. All right. I'm sorry. Right. Because we're, we're be doing Bronze Mythic also. So 28th. And then I'm also going to be uh, doing in-store appearance at Cool Stuff down there as well, which is kind of cool too. So, all right. What do you think? Oh, you're going to Cool Stuff. That's cool when you're down there. Uh, Rabbit Response is back. And also uh, Feather of Flight looks decent. Um, but here, probably we stay with the Rabbit theme. Or is there something else that you, that you think would be better uh, with with our deck so far. Well, what are you taking? I would probably take the rabbit card to stay in rabbit, but the feather to flight looks like it might be. Well, there there are multiple rabbit cards. So oh, oh, okay, I missed them. Yeah, Head Homestead makes. Two oh, there we go. Tokens. I did not see that. Okay, the duo the duo's a rabbit also. I mean, it doesn't have any rabbit like synergy, I guess technically, but. Okay, I didn't see that card in there. Mm-hmm. Pro- um, so head to the homestead when it enters. Create so more, so more creature tokens. It's a three two, so you have three creatures for five. Probably, probably now that I see the card, head of the homestead is what I would take. I think it's probably better than the uh, rabbit response card. Okay, so um, I think I agree. So rabbit response is a good card, but a really important concept in drafting is the idea of diminishing returns. You wouldn't play five of this card. No. Right? Uh, you would play five good two drops or five good three drops. This, sure. is, a five, this is a five drop. I wouldn't play five of these either. Uh, but you kind of like need the head of the homestead and the hop to it. To even make the rabbit response good, whereas uh, hop to it and head of the homestead are still good enough by themselves, and there are other ways to pump them too. So, uh, so I think rabbit response was not not in the discussion here. Uh, so I think it's homestead duo. Feather of Flight is good, but again, it's a card that plays better in the red white deck where targeting your own things is more important. But this, right. is, this is a card that is, is good in any deck. It's definitely a, certainly a fine card. Uh, it does play well with Phineas also. Getting it flying is kind of cool. That's what I was like giving it. The reason I looked at it is because it gets something flying, which making a creature unblockable, well, not totally unblockable, but harder to block is always probably a good thing. Well, the, I mean specifically with Phineas, where Phineas yeah. has, an, has an attack trigger. So if it doesn't have safe attacks, you can't attack. But if it has flying, it can't have safe attacks. But that being said, I think it's home center duo here. As for what's the right pick, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, I mean, the duo is really, really good. This is the kind of card that's like a threat that's also a payoff. And so, control games, vigilance, and everything. So, yeah, this, and, and the duos, yeah, the duo would be nice here with Hop to a Duck because now you got four or five creatures on the board and it's going it, to, you know, it gives your things plus X plus. Vigilance is kind of nice too. So, you, you can attack it and, and still block with it. Right. So, if it, this, so, so maybe Tree Guard Duo is the pick here. So, this this is a, uh, a payoff that pays you off for having a bunch of things, but it's also a creature in and of itself. So, you know, yeah. if, the, if you're behind on board, you can play it. It's three four. It's fine. Whereas behind, when you're mind on board, rabbit response is pretty. Then not gonna do anything. You know, so it's it's mixed close. I'm not sure honestly. It is a frog for a poly wallop. And again, a lot of drafting is like, you know, is the, is it a huge deal that duos a frog for a poly wallop? Not really. But those little oh, that's that's, that's kind of nice. Oh, right. that's kind of nice. Oh, that's kind of nice. Those things do add yeah. up. So I think so, super duo is the pick here. Yeah. So it's duo or head of the homestead. I think are the, are the two pot options here. Head of the Homestead is a little more defining, where it's like, I think if our deck is really, really good, the head is going to be a little better. I, I do wish it better, though. I can take the duo. The duo, duo is just, it's just too good of a card, comparatively. Uh, yeah, take the duo. So, we are passing head, Rabbit Response, Head of the Homestead. Also, make note of the other cards in the back here. There's two really good red cards in this back. Uh, the Boar is excellent. Uh, and then the uh, the Talent's also a really good card. It looks a little, little like weird and slow. It's a million words. I don't know. It's hard to read all the cards at once. But uh, but yeah, so that's, that's a note. But yeah, take the duo here. I think it's fine. Um, I think taking Homestead would also be reasonable. I'm not honestly exactly sure what, what, what the right pick is here, but I think that either one is, is reasonable. So Red's also a very weak, weak color of set too. So all right, so we can pass it back and uh, take a look and let me know what you think. Yeah. 11 tomorrow is the set review, yes. Got Jay, Jay is a friend of a stream who also built my new computer. There you go. Yeah, the computer we're on right now. Yep. So no, no rabbits here. Yep. Um, so I, I just look at wear down and say, is that a good card? I mean, it, it destroys a target and artifact enchantment. But this is not a heavy artifact and enchantment set. Pretty narrow. You know, uh, and these sort of narrow cards are not typically good, very good and limited. Uh, it can be okay as a sideboard card. If you're playing best of one, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you're mostly just looking for just, like, good, solid rate. I think one problem with commander players have a lot in limited is that, like, they want to do the cool, tricky stuff. You know, like, oh, this is a cool little card. They can do some cool stuff. Or, well, if I get right. this and this, I can do this. You know, it's like, well, 
step number one in limited is just rate. Right, just because like, it's what's, a, what's the mana cost of this creature and how big is it? Well, right, you well, know? if the opponent has no artifacts or enchantments, it's a dead card in your hand. Right. So, uh, that's like job number one. So, the, uh, the uh, Rampager, so four, 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 four. I know it's a, it's not a, uh, it's not a rabbit, but um, it's a, four, so that's on rate. It's in color. Uh, so this is where I would say, am I looking for another green card, or is there, or is this? Do we look at maybe one of the, maybe one of the black cards? I know that one of the blacks over there, early winner, uh, can. Uh, well, that's for five mana, but you can exile a creature, which removal is always good. But I don't know if five mana removal is that great. Yeah, it's pretty... It's like... Bottom barrel a little bit, but... So probably from what I see here, the Rampage is probably where I would go. I don't see a... Uh, I don't see anything that jumps out at me that's... That's better. Agree. So your, your process here is correct. Basically, we're like, okay, you're going to be back. What are the cards in my colors? There's no white cards. There's two green cards. One of them sucks. One of them is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Then step two is, okay... Are there any cards not in my colors that are worth taking a speculation on? The answer is no. Like, none of these cards are, are really good. You know, like, Mentor's okay, Doer's okay, but none of these cards are remotely that exciting. It's just a little clunky removal spell. If there was some banger black card in this pack, we might speculate on it. It's possible. Because sure. this card is, we're not losing out on that much by not taking this card, but there isn't, and this card's fine. So, happy to take it. No big deal. Yeah, and, it, and it's got a, you know, it's got an ability where you you know if you offspring it now you got two creatures that can't be blocked. Right? right, and then again that synergy plays well on our deck because we're looking to go wide anyway. So right. it's like it's all the most important part of the card because the baseline level of this card is four 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 a little hard to block. Great, it's fun fine on our deck. It's not right. super exciting, and then it can also do things well. So, but a four 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 is probably always good and limited. Whether even if it had no other ability, uh, it, it, it's funny. Like I would say yes four or five years ago. But um, now it's, modern day limited the, the 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 size and power creep on creatures is, is huge to the point where like I would not I would usually not play a vanilla four four so four. You one, can, but it's not it's not exciting. Yeah, but if it's a four four for three, then maybe you yeah for that, sure that makes a big difference for sure. But all right, so next back, uh, what do you uh, what are you thinking here? Head of the homesteads back around. Yep. So. That kind of catches my eye, of course, because we passed on it earlier to get the uh, to take the other card. But now that it's back, is that a uh, that's there? Um, well, again, your basic your baseline function should be just like last back. Okay, right now we're green white. What are the green white cards? So there's head of the homestead, and then there's high stride. Right, and technically you could play guard mouse. But yeah, you but, can, you but, can play the mouse there. But it is pretty it's pretty locked in, into its own archetype. And right. Anyway, so high stride. Okay, it gains what is that plus one plus three and gains reach. That doesn't really seem to do. Uh, I mean, that's a one mana kind of combat trick, but I don't know if that does a lot in our deck. Um, yeah, I think exactly okay is yeah. Right, I, so. I think head of the homestead is the pick here because it kind of feeds into what we're doing more than any other card here, and it's on color. All right, so oh, this is great, it's very good in our deck for sure. And but again, your next step is okay, well, are there any cards that aren't in our colors that excite me at all? And there are a lot of otter cards here. Us otter ball antics uh, makes token mentors the signpost uncommon for otters makes things cheaper. The duo is a solid you know solid otter con common. Rather than an otter, but so you have three solid otter cards here. Again, if you play a lot of Bloomberg, you know the otter archetype is not very good. Uh, and again, so the, but none of these cards are like wow, holy crap, an right. FDK. They're not like bomb. I'm right. gonna splash or take a speculation on a card because it's so good. Right. So pretty easy to have the homestead here and our deck was looking pretty good so far, honestly. So one important thing to note at this point in the draft though is that you're always mapping out your deck. You always have an idea what your deck is. And right now, what's wrong with our deck? Uh, we have no removal yet. Uh, we have either one, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so we're light removal, sure. And then right now we have, we have no, we don't have a good, our curve's kind of, we have no one drops right now. Right, our curve is an issue right now. I mean, we have yeah. one, there are a ton of good ones. And, and there is a one-one for one, a rabbit in this pack, and that's probably, honestly, probably the in this pack, that's probably the pick. Um, yeah, so my, my point is that we have one one drop, one, I'm sorry, one two drop, one three drop. So right. our curve is not great. We have, we have a lot of fours, a five, so right. I think you want to constantly be reviving and being aware of. So uh, as you mentioned, the duos here, duo is not great in a rabbit deck. It's more of a mouse card. Because it's, it's built, it's not a very good rate. It's a one for one, whatever. And it's built to target yourself over and over and over oh, again. Okay, because it says, okay, tap one target creature against one. So, so it is, is for that mechanic. Right, so it's more built for the mouse rabbit deck. 
but it, it's it's okay. You know, if you have a, a hop to it and you want to push through one of the rabbits, sure. It's it's not the worst thing in the world. And also, this is that because once I have a bunch of creatures in play, you're, yeah. you both have a bunch of stuff in play. So when you you play your your big pump abilities, you can count them all up. So synergy. Right. So and aside from that, this pack's also really bad. So I'm saying with that, that I, I kind of looked at it. with that said. That's probably the best card there, and not necessarily the best card there, but it is a rabbit in its own color, and there's nothing else that blows me away that's not that that's not on color. Yeah, common the, the, stocking the pantry is. So that's when you have one more when you have one more, one more plus one plus ones. You put a spot in. We're not really doing plus ones that much. I mean, I guess Phineas does a little bit, but uh, that that card just a dump jump out at me as being great. Yeah, this is the kind of card that a commander play would often fall for, where it's like, oh, it's a cool little side quest. I play this enchantment. I have some possible encounters. I can do this. I can draw some cards and stuff. But, like, there's just so many freaking hoops here. You know, like, and it's it's not easy to build a a, a deck around a card like this. And if you are going to do that, the card needs to be a banger. So right. it's a, a low floor uh, kind of card. It needs to have a really, really high ceiling. And this one's, like, just not even that good anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. and then the blue card there, the one mana blue card, looks like it's a flick. Yeah, okay, that, so that's a flicker spell. Uh, not well. I mean, we do have a frog, but we're not, our deck's not really doing flickering. We don't have really any abilities that would be great flickering right now. So I'm not sure that's that would be enough to go off color for. Yeah, it's just not. It's it's an okay card if you're exactly that deck. It's very very linear. So yeah, pretty easy duo here. Nothing too crazy. And honestly, we're sort of seeing you know a bit of you know this is like I would say kind of a typical Bloomberg experience where you kind of get kind of get locked into your lane. Nothing really get out here. And then there's a lot of, a lot of blue cards and red cards going around because it's got those other kind of weaker colors, but it is what it is. So next back is up, and uh, and what do you think? Okay, Chat, let's... feel free to ask questions I can answer while Jay's thinking because Jay's takes a second to read all the cards, which is totally fine too. Happy to answer those. Okay. Dictator for Hire says, watch a freshly brewed Omen Hawker Interplanter Beacon deck. Yeah. I mean, Historic still seems like it, it can be fun, uh, but yeah, it needs a little work, obviously. So so our own color card here is Dewdrop Cure. So that's a recursion spell. So, so return low creatures. Right now, we don't have a lot of manual value, two or less creatures. We have exactly two of them. So, not sure that's that's great. Okay, and that's the only uh, own color card in the pack. So, there's a counter spell. Not sure that's what we're into. Not sure that's worth taking. Um, yeah, I mean, Pond Robin is technically on color. It is green, green for a, a long Okay, long. there it is. Green, green but for like, frog, It's so. obviously not great. You know. So so it's two green, two green, green for one, a one, one, and you get to draw a card. So that's another two drop, which you don't have a ton of, but a two, two for one is not spectacular. This again, these the the cards here, none of them are very good. Or I mean none of them are very great for what we're trying to do. So Tom makes a resub. So yeah, but this is a spot where we were discussing kind of off ramps and like kind of pivot points. And Pond Profit's a really good card. In the frog deck, this card is absolutely premium. It is a one of the best cards in the engine. It also isn't the actual worst in our deck, right? We want to have bodies in play. It's a cheap way to put a body in play and draw a card, whatever. We have a poly wall up. So there's like a few little, there's a few things here that make this card reasonable. Yeah. And everything else here is unplayable. Like, yeah. like this card is totally unplayable. It should never ever be in your deck. Uh, right. It requires, again, so many hoops jump through and it just, it's just not good. You know, and like. And that's why I read it. I said, we don't have a lot of two value cards, but even then, if I want to recur two cards, two value. Or, Mana value two or less is kind of the low end of the curve. Is it really worth a card to recur right. with that kind of recursion when I'm giving my opponent an entire card in return if I want to do two? Yeah. It's and, very, and, it's very very narrow. Yeah. So and, and you're right about the uh, the pawn profit. It is a um, it's a two two for one. We don't have a lot of low. Uh, we don't have a lot of low mana value creatures right now. We have a lot of higher. So it's it 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 does fill that role. Right. And also right now, if we look at our cards we have so far. The Brave Game Duo is probably not going to make our deck, hopefully. So we actually have two white cards, and then we have five green cards. So we're not, white is not even, like, particularly open yet. Uh, so we, we could, in theory, end up going frogs, or maybe we're going frogs splashing for white, or whatever. So this is the kind of pick that's really important in a draft, because you're maximizing all of your possible picks and giving yourself the most options possible. So take the profit. And this is pick number nine. This is the, this is the pack that we opened initially. Okay. So, huh, rabbit response came back around again. Um, okay, so we have uh, we have an artifact at the end that would be that would be, it's every creature type, so it would be a it would be a rabbit. It's got reach. Not sure that's so great. And a two three for three would probably not super great in limited. That's bad. Yeah, it's really 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 bad these days. And then the the lands the land over there is not super great. It's for blue. We're not in blue. Yeah, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty easy pick, honestly. Yeah, we're, so we're taking the response. The response yeah. is great. 
Uh, nothing else to really think about, honestly. So, cool. Plays very well on our deck. We're very happy about that. We got some, uh, some blue-red cards here. Um, if I had to, if I had to pick one, is it, is it the draw spell? So we want to look at the, uh, we're looking for off ramps here, right? Right. So in theory, our, our closest off ramp is. Oh, okay. Frogs. I see the frog card. Yeah. The frog card at the end would be the closest off ramp because it is a frog. This card isn't even that good in frogs. Yeah. But it's a playable and things get ugly. You want to have playables in the deck that we're going to put a play. So this is, this is reasonable enough. So I think they want to put it on the board. And then we got the crier. Hermit and the Mighty Me, more blue, more blue red cards. So a two one, and a draw and discard. So draw and loot. And what's let's see the other one. I think we it's blue, but I think we take the frog because that's kind of that's kind of our off ramp right now with yep. frogs. So much stronger. So take those two. We got more frogs. So we got the same one that gets flying. This one's not very good. And then a, a frog that blinks. ETB blanket blanket thing. So three three for five that that blinks something. It's a flyer too. Yeah, it's a flyer. I, I think that's probably the frog we take. Yeah, this, this card's actually like it's not great in the frog deck, but like it's playable. Whereas like you really should have this card in your frog deck typically. This is more of like an aggro card. It just makes sense in a frog deck because a frog is more about like getting value and stuff. But sure. So now we have three frog cards in our board as a four other duo too. So blue is clearly open because blue is yeah, always blue's open. Blue's blue, open but blue is kind of sucks. So all right. So hop on over to pack number two. Let me take the mouse and take a look at the cards. And uh, any questions, chat, be happy to answer them while we're looking over the cards. Dictator of Hires says Dewdrop Cure is one of the the best cards in your deck are absolutely worthless. I disagree. I think Dewdrop Cure is is almost always unplayable. Even if I had like two good one drops and ten good two drops, because what if they exile them? What if they bounce them? What if they you know, it just it's just a blank card too often where you can just play another threat. Um if you're playing a grindy matchup against like a like a blue black deck and they have a lot of kill spells, and you do have like you know three or four premium two drops. Be bored in or whatever, but I would not be happy to have that card in my deck basically ever. So here, I don't think you ever you don't take the land. I don't I don't think that's a, probably a play you would make right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think table patch is something you'd want to take right now. It's a very it's a very safe pick if you're trying to speculate and be open ended. But we aren't really doing that. Right. We're just pretty locked in our deck right now. So, so we've got our frog here, our one one for one. That's got um, you know we might have other frogs or rabbits. And we in our other picks the uh, the intrepid rabbit here, um, probably we got a three drop and a one drop. See, you know, this is where I'd say I have a I would struggle between which one of these two to take. Probably the one drop, but this would with offspring. So for for three, I now get a three two and a one one, and I get to put two one one counters somewhere else. That seems to be more value. Okay, so Rabbit's great. This is a fantastic card. It's one of the best white commons, if not the best white common. The card's excellent, but my card's insane. And one of, one of the really good heuristics you can internalize uh, is whenever you're close on two cards, take the cheaper one. Okay. Because you're always concerned about your, your curve. Uh, this is more of a four drop than a three drop also. You're really going to offspring this card when you cast it. That's when I saw yeah, you, you want to cast that with the offspring more often than not, probably. Right. And my color is insane in our deck. We're obviously rabbits. It's a frog, but it, it cares about rabbits too. Yeah. And then we also have a possible backdoor into frogs because it's good there too. So yeah. this card, it's also a super high power level. So there are a lot of cards this back because the rabbit is also, it would be very, very good in our deck. And then on pure rate and stats alone, Gale Moose is insane. Uh, it's not particularly great in our deck as far as like the synergy and plans that we're doing. So like, I would definitely take the Mike Caller or the Rabbit over it, but it's a really good green card uh, and just a really good card in general. But, huh. but yeah, so Mike Caller is a pick here. If Mike Caller was a, was a blind card, I think I would take Rabbit next. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so taking Mike Caller, pretty happy about it. And we get past uh, another favorite passage. So take a look and tell me what you think. Yeah, the cheaper card to Heuristic is a good one uh, because it's a, it's a good way to kind of just train yourself to make sure you're being aware of your mana curve at all times uh, because the worst thing you can do is finish draft with like two two drops and a three drop and a bunch of four drops. Uh, Modern Day Limited is very, very focused on uh, curving out, getting on the board, and so on and so forth. So we have the safe pick here. We have a pump spell. Uh, that card's not very good. I don't think, especially in limited. Cash grab? Is it, is it, it's good in a certain deck. I don't Correct. know if it's good in it our is, deck. It is ax 
excellent in the squirrel deck. Uh, that, that's what I mean. Outside of the squirrel deck, I don't think it's very right. good. This doesn't seem to be. This doesn't seem to be great. Pay one, get a man. Put a land, but put it on top. If you don't have a way to draw it, so you just say so you don't have a draw. Basically, you're gonna draw a land the next turn. Well, I guess you could sack it. You could pay two, sack it, and immediately immediately draw that land. But I'm not sure that's what doesn't add to the board immediately. I'm not sure that's what we want to be doing in limited. Um, see anything spectacular? Um, let's see, this is so that's a raccoon warrior. That's not really where we are. So here, are we on the pump spell or are we on the safe pick? That's kind so, of the two I'd be between there. I don't see. Well, we we have another duo, but do we already have two of those? I think. Do we really need three of those? I, I almost never. So yeah, like, that's kind of that's kind of what I thought. It's a, yeah, the idea of, of diminishing returns is exponential towards mana cost. Where, if you could get, I mean, if you're getting three five drops out, that's a really long game. When you're probably, I don't, I don't know how often you'd ever, even if you had them in your hand, how often you'd be able to cast five drop three times in a game. Right, so they're all good red cards this back. Uh, the Mara is pretty good, obviously, if you're a raccoon deck, to card in general. Rabid Gnaw and Assault are both good rule spells, but obviously we're not really even close to those things. So Passage is the kind of card that it would be good in your deck if you're multicolored, and we're not. We're screen white. So it's right. whatever. And then Crumbagate, it's great. This is a, a super high-quality trick. Uh, it's great at protecting our, our good rares, which are cheap. Uh, it's a great card. It's that's really, that, really that, card that's kind of... That, that's where I would go yep. more often than not, is that card right there. It so, looked like... It looked like it was a decent enough combat trick where you'd actually want to play it. Cool. So. Okay. So we have. So we see here, we had our we had our frog, you know, pivot as a possibility. Right. We haven't really needed to go down that path yet. We've got a good white card, kind of rolling along here. And if you have. So we've seen we've also. seen this frog before. Yep. And then we have our rabbit card here. So whenever rabbit controls, this seems good. If we can play it and then like hop to it right after or something like that to put multiple bodies on the board. And it's not even the same turn. So if you were to play this and then follow it up, hop to it the next turn, uh, now, now you've got three rabbits entering the board. So you're going to, you, you get a pump. That seems to be, and a three, three for three is not terrible. I mean, yeah. That, that's not a bad card. This card's insane. That, uh, that's, this, this, to me, this is the problem. This kind of draws me. Hey, it's on theme, and it's that seems to be a good card with a good ability, right. especially with things in our deck that create tokens that help create that ability to trigger multiple times. Right. So, like a like commander player, you look for the ceiling of the card. Right. You're like, oh, if I hop to it after it, I can I can do the thing. That's obviously insane and a possible outcome. But even just the base level outcome, just play this as three three for three, target a thing and pump it and attack. And play one rabbit a turn and pump is still fine. Right. So floor very high, ceiling very high, which is the recipe for a really really good card. Uh, nothing here is remotely close. Um, it's one of the cards, a mouse card, so I do anything. Uh, there's some good cards in this back, you know. The Kazuma Green's a pretty good black card. The Crab's a good blue card. It's a grotto, but not even close. So pretty easy uh, host here. All right, on to uh, pack two, pick four. Yep. So we've got. We're miss. We have a little removal, but not a lot. So, is there anything here that would look like that would give us some removal? So, you and Pernith gain hexproof. We give us Prime Pernith gain also gain indestructible. That's eh, great. Doesn't seem super special. Here's another frog. So, it gives our frogs ward one, which could be relevant. So, if it can't be blocked, when you do a comment down the exit. So, so it's another flicker spell. We have a little bit of that. Uh, that doesn't seem to be very great. There, that land's not gonna. We're not really that. Well, I mean, we got some blue, but not a lot. There's an O2 and enters, put a part on you gain a life, and that's in a relevant creature type room, which is frogs. Then we got it. We don't want another one of those. I'm probably <laughs> between the uh, one mana creature and then the. Uh, I'm not sure how much hexproof and indestructible. We have an air card that gives indestructible. I'm not sure hex in. In limited, if hexproof and indestructible was really great enough to gift a card to an opponent, so I'm probably over here. Yeah, this is this is like a command, commander card through and through. Like this, this fact is like this is good at commander games, it's just awful at regular games of Magic. Like, uh, what's the card? Heroic Intervention, right? It's yeah, mana. like that card's like a, a premier commander card, right? Right. And like that card's just ass. Like you know, like in a, in a regular game of Magic for the most part. So um, I'm sure to get some. I mean, we get some hateful comments on YouTube about that because they're really, really <laughs> sad because they, they get mad when I insult their pet cards. But I, I card's terrible. So pretty, pretty thin back for us. The only, only cards you could even be, be even put in our deck without splashing are the Druid, the Witness, and the Cultivator. And these are all cards that are in our colors and castable technically, but completely off our plans. Right? We have a Forage card. We're not foraging. Right. We have a Life Gain card. We're not gaining life. 
And then we have a frog card. This card's like okay. I mean, but it's not good. You know, uh, where the point of this card, like Pond Prophet, is that blue green's all, all about flickering and bouncing. Uh, and this is a good card if you have Right, if you flicker the card over and over, it's great because right. you're going to get a 1-1 one, one counter every time you do it, and you gain a life, but you get ahead of a... The life gain could matter if you're against a really aggro deck. Just. Right, but as a card by itself, it's not particularly great. Uh, as a 1-3, it gains, you know, gets life, or it puts a counter somewhere else. It's not great. Uh, I mean, nothing else here is good anyway. If you want to speculate, Longer Lurker is a really good card, but it looks like we're pretty solidly a green-white at this point. Uh, I'm probably the Druid, honestly. Yeah, the only other thing that might even look is the Waxwan Witness, which is a Flying Vigilance. I know we're not in Batch of Clerics, but I don't know. A 2-4 for th 4 is probably not that. No, nah, that's probably not very good. Again, like five, six years ago, a 2-4 Flying Vigilance for 4 would have been really, really good. Uh, but these days, the power creep on creatures is yeah. just... It, all creatures and, are huge. And we're not so. really gaining or losing life, so we're not... The ability's not really over to what we're doing, so probably the Druid's the thing. Right, so... Take a Druid, is what it is, whatever. And then move on to our, our next pack. Now we have one rabbit response. I'm going to guess rabbit response is a not good in more than one. We probably don't need two of those. I don't think it really, not not sure if it's something that we'd want more than one of them. I mean, yeah, it's a, it, it's a payoff for what we're doing, but for four mana, not sure if we want two of them. There are definitely diminishing returns. It comes down to how how good of a rabbit response rabbit response deck is your deck. I think playing two is fine. Okay. You know, I don't like it. I think if we had... Say like say in an extreme example, we have, you know, three one drops, seven two drops, and four hop to it. That deck would probably play up to four rabbit responses. Right. It's, it's, because it's, 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 it's so it's a payoff exactly for what we're doing. Right. So I think your average deck will play two happily, but it doesn't like need to. And again, it's also it's not just about my rabbit response count. It's about the count of okay, how many ways do I have to win the game? How sure. many ways do I have to utilize these tokens of putting in play? How many ways do I have to push through, right? So look, let's look at our deck. You know, so we have Chrome Get it's, you know, it's a, 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 it's a trick. It's not like a huge trick, though. Uh, the My Callers plays really well with all of our tokens. So it's a good way to push through. Uh, the Host, same thing. Really good at pushing through. Uh, so is Phineas. Uh, we, have, we already have a response. We have the Tree Guard Duo. Another good way to push through, right? A bunch of creatures to play, make one bigger. Awesome. Well, it is better with keywords. You don't have a lot of keywords in our deck, but still. But there's a good a good counter. Like four, we have four or five cards which, 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 which could conceivably help push through or make a board bigger or utilize our tokens okay. or whatever. So, so. let's pick Rabbit Response as an option. And then this, you know, yes, well, this is, I mean, it's a two, three for three. It's not great. We're not in Forage, but it is a creature. Probably, this is probably where you go. I don't see anything else that jumps that jumps out. Okay, so that's a 2-1. That would be a frog and a rabbit. So you can add a mana for one. Probably probably, probably not that great. Yeah, this card's really, really bad. Uh, but there is one card you have not looked at yet that is in our colors. Which would be over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a squirrel raccoon. When it creates inner food, when you expend four, so when you so when you spend more than four mana in a turn, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter, and it creates a food, which food's always great to... Gain some life. Probably still here, but this is probably not terrible. So this is a, a, a full-on rate question, where Baker's Brand Duo is just a great card. Like, we, we want two drops anyway. All right? Yeah, that's and true. Then, we, only have one, we only have two two drops right now, and it is uh, more on rate than our... Well, I guess our one two drop's good. Right. The other Pond, one's a one-one, one, so this is a two-two. Ideally, Pond Prophet will not be in our deck. Uh, it's a hard to cast two drop. It doesn't really do anything. So, like, ideally, we wish you would put this over here. I think it's misleading. So, we have one two drop, right? All right. This card's a raccoon. It cares about expending and making food. In theory, none of those things are good in our deck. But it's just a good card. It's just a two two right. for two. It makes a food. So, you're getting a lot of material for right. only two mana. I mean, if, if it doesn't matter what deck you're in, a food is three life. Right. And ch chat's, you know, pointing out rectangle theory here, which is the idea of just, like, Cards that put a lot of things in play are often very good because they're just giving you a lot of material to use for various things. Even if we're not using the material for that much, it's still food. You know, you're racing yeah. up, gain three life, cool, whatever. And it's cheap. I play a four drop, attack for three with this thing. This card's just good. And we're also destined for two drops. So we'd be happy taking a lower class two drop than this. Uh, this one's actually just actively good. So does it pump the, does, does it pump the mic caller? No. Does it get pumped by Phineas? No. You know, is it a frog for probably wallop? No. But that's okay. Not everything needs to be but perfectly. It, it is a it's, body that's on kind of on rate. Yeah, it's it, it's a, above rate. It's too right. it's too good of a of a card to play to, to take. And then also, draft thing's also about looking through and saying, okay, what do I really need right now? 
Because, like, there's a point in draft sometimes where, like, I've had a point where I have a six amount of bomb rare, uh, a Luma. It's a six drop, ETBs, makes a bunch of lands, whatever. It's a really good card. And I had a deck in uh, Bronze Mythic recently where I already had one of them. And I had a great late game. I had, like, one or two other good five mana rares. I had three of a frog uncommon that, like, blinks your own stuff. You sink mana to blink. So I had, I had an insane late game. But I, did, I was light on early creatures. Pack three opens up. And it was another six drop rare or two mana mana dork. And in a vacuum, the rare is much better. Right. But, but if you got nothing to do the first four or five turns, you probably lost the game before you ever got your six drop out. Exactly. But my deck really, really needed a two drop. The mana dork was perfect for that role. And I just needed to not die and have things to do early. So I took the two drop over the rare, which is kind of a weird pick. But it's about the context of what you're doing in your own draft. Right. So, and, so. and I think a commander player would take the flashier card probably every time and not realize... Right. You know. I'm mistake. I'm sorry. The the duo does pump the mic caller. So that is, that's obviously cool. But sure. No, so. that's true because it, cause, cause it is a uh, it, it is a it is a record. Yeah, it cares about it cares about all the green the green tribes in the set. So cool. So uh next pack goes around. Okay. Let's see. What we got here. <laughs> a lot of words. <laughs> yeah, a lot, lot of words. words. Some of the classes are good. I'm not sure this one is that great for what we're trying to do. I mean, yeah, it puts a it puts an O four out there, but and it gives so it gives it creates a token. It gives it defender. I mean, so it can't attack unless you level it up. I'm not sure that's great. So whenever level two, so for one mana, whenever whenever one or more non non permanent oh non creature non permanent you control enter. So we don't have a lot of those right now. So that's a so that's a. Blink spell. Remember your shortcuts. Go to, go to the cards in our colors first. Okay. Yeah, go to the cards in our colors first, So, which is the only card. It's this one and this one. Right. So, and... That doesn't seem like a good combat trick we talked about before. That's the other card in our color. And then the other, other card that's in our... Even in our sideboard is this blue blink spell. Or flicker spell. Right. So... At this point in the draft, now we're we're pretty locked into our deck. If, yeah. I, if, if we are uh, past an insane black rare... It would depend on what's in the back if we're taking it out, but probably not. This point, we're pretty locked in, so we can mostly blinders a little bit more, just kind of look at the white cards. This card's actually pretty good, but it requires a very specific set of scenarios. This is like the, the downloadable content of your game, where like, when you're, when, you're, when you're drafted like 15 times already, 20 times, then you take this card and try to figure out and make it work. It, it's hard to do, but it's it's fun and rewarding, and it is good if you do it right, but it's not an easy thing to do. Uh, and then this card, just whatever. This card's obviously worse than come and get it. That's the card we're going to take. It could make our deck. You know, it's not the it's not embarrassing to play. It's not very good, but yeah, just take the high stride, be happy about it, and move on to uh, our next pick. And uh, not a ton of cards on color here. Nope, a little thin. The only really card we have on color is the land. So it is a land. It is in green, which you are. We we do want to cast creatures, and it does have a pump for our two relevant creature types, which is. Actually, three now, because we have frogs, rabbits, and raccoons in this deck. Actually, yeah, we have all those in the deck. Is a land something... Let me ask you this. When in a draft is it okay to take a land in, like, our deck that's just a two-color deck? Often. Okay. Uh, but these lands aren't that good. Uh, but I think that drafting lands is a very good thing. Uh, Modern Day Limited, basically every card's playable. Uh, so, like, you don't typically struggle for playables, and... You could only play 23 or 24 of the cards you draft. Right. Because you have to play lands, right? So if you're able to draft a land that gives you value and you're able to play more of the cards you drafted, that's a good thing. Because now, say say I have, even say, say it's a cycling land, a, a real simple land, right? It's, you know, whatever. It cycles for two mana. It's a, it comes to my tap. It's a white land, whatever. Cycling lands are, they're not insanely good, but they are adding value to your deck, right? Yeah. So if you're able to play three of those, and so you're playing three cards you drafted over basic lands you get for free, there's some value there too. These lands are pretty overrated. Uh, the not being able to cast spells is a pretty big deal. Uh, this card can't cast to High Stride or Polywalla, but that's it. It's actually pretty good in our deck. You know, we, we're not, you know, if this was the, was the white one and it couldn't cast Come and Get It, uh, Hop to It, or Rabbit Response, that would be a, a major disqualifier. Mm -hmm. But uh, otherwise, to, what's up? To me, I was going to say, to me, the pump ability seems more relevant because we have a, we have all, most of those creature types. Well, the the the, the add mana ability is a drawback because it can only cast certain things. So the question right. is, how bad is this drawback? In a, and then yes, the, the, the bonus is cool and it is good, pretty good in our deck. So this card, this card's fine. I would play two of this card. I would not play it on some occasions. But I think 
context contextually our deck is fine. So. Well, and, and in addition, there's not really another card in that pack that jumps out as better. Correct. So, uh, next pack. Okay. So we've got a here's our own color card. So another another uh, combat trick. Start creature plus three plus two. And another gets plus one plus one. So you need two creatures for that to do anything. Uh, return part return to your hand. So that's just a. Uh, Kind of a recursion spell. It's the only two that are on color. Uh, so there's a the only there's a there's, we've seen that before the looter. That's so that's a frog. This is where I would struggle. I really don't know what I would take here. Probably the I mean, do I take so we have no kind of recursion at all. Do we take that or do we take another combat trick? You tell me what's our, what's our deck what's our deck all about? Our deck is all about right now probably pumping up creatures. Right, we're 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 an, we're an aggro deck through and through. Yeah, you know, so so the combat trick is probably what we take there. Yep, and that's your that's the thing. You're always you're you're building a deck and that's just a pile of cards. You know, that's why the we do a show called uh, Draftsman Takes the Wheel, where those rankings are on, ranking the cards. And those rankings are based on an aggregate. They're just like you know, on average, this card wins X amount of its games. It wins more than this card, therefore it's better than this right. card. It doesn't actually think about or you know intelligently think about what cards are necessarily really good in decks. I guess it does a little bit where it'll say this card wins X amount of games in a green white deck. So it kind of approximates. Right, but it's it. looking at just overall. It's only your specific. It doesn't really look at other cards you've taken and rates them. It just looks at that card in a vac that pack in a vacuum. No, it does look at the cards. Oh, you, it does look at that thing. Okay, but again, in an aggregate. So for Got example, it. we might be a green white deck, but say we were a really weird green white deck and we had eleven removal spells. Five ramp spells and three big creatures. We were like a weird, like green white control deck. It would still rate the pump spell really highly because, in your average green white deck, it is good, Got but it. it would not be intelligent enough to go, Well, you only have three creatures and they're all 10 dens, so you don't need a pump spell, you know? Makes uh, sense. Right. But, but your goal, but your goal is when you're building your deck is what's my deck want to do, and I want to take cards that work towards that goal. This is a slow, grindy, recursive card. It's not very good either, but, uh, you know, it's a card that wants to play in a long game. This is a, a good. This is a good trick. This is a good. Good. The floor. The floor is is high enough, and the ceiling is very high. It could be a two for one, and it's much better than high stride is. You yeah. know, we're looking for maybe like three combat tricks, two or three combat tricks in this deck. Okay, and the second thing said is it's up two. So if you only have one creature, you can play this and do a two two. You know, I don't want to do that, but you don't have to have two creatures out to play this. Correct, and that's that's, that's very important for maintaining the floor, right? So if it had to target two creatures, it would be a lot worse, and the floor would be much lower, and that gives you that widespread you don't really want. So that's right. great. It's just very good card. So. Take that. I think our high strike, high strike can go out now. Let me get uh, another pack here. Another high strike, which we've already discussed a million times. Yep. And this little down players is just a 3-3 three, three for 3. Uh, it's a really good in the mouse deck. because it, Not really good. It's, a good. it's good in the mouse deck because you can re repeatedly target your thing over and over again. Trigger your abilities. We don't have any abilities like that. But I think in this, 3-3 uh, three, three for 3 is probably good enough. It's another kind of uh, lower on the mana curve thing. And it's better. There's nothing else here that jumps out as better, especially on color. Right. There's nothing here regardless. And this is a card we don't want to play this card. Right. And but if we are if desperate for a creature... To, we have to, but we we'd rather find something better and be able to cut it. Right. Let me get... Yeah, we're, we're just going to go through a little faster. I think Scarlet Troll is blank. So whatever. Scarlet Troll is blank. We're not playing them. Take the bell. This yep. is a possible splash for the future. If we have some rare or whatever. Right. If we end up doing yeah. blue, sure. Uh, and then just more, some more cards. Uh, this is a card that's like a weird... This is a card that's usually really, really bad. It could like, in theory, maybe be good to be in our deck. If you're playing a bunch of tokens, probably not though. But let's take it, whatever. So, yep. got that. And we got a... Uh, and then we, I, I say here you take the frog. Like, for example... Well, we, well, no, we've already got like three of them. Well, first, well, that's the one I just realized. That's the one we've already got two of. But, for example, I would almost never put this card in my deck. Right. The the downside of not casting spells is debilitating, and the upside's very, very bad. But we're not, it doesn't actually matter. It just doesn't matter at all. So Because right, we're not playing the one of those cards anymore. Right. And then, honestly, the mascot here is not good, but it could help a splash also. So you're being aware of, like, what your, what your deck is capable of. At this point now, we have a Fountain Port Bell and a mascot. If we were to open some off-color rare, we could like, conceivably splash it, but... All right, it's pack three. We open it back. I'm going to look, look, look at the pack. I'm going to answer a question for chat. Chat asked about uh, about hate drafting, so I'll talk about that while you look at the okay. other pack. So, hate drafting, of course, is... You can do it, look if you want. Uh, so, of course, hate drafting is irrelevant on Arena because you don't play in your pod. Uh, you know, you just play the first person to be able to play. Typically, if you're at your local FNM, you're playing an RCQ, you're playing an actual, you know, tournament... Uh, you're playing an eight-person draft. You're playing the players in your pod. So Jay is passing to me. I'm passing to Jay. I have an insane rare in uh, insane black rare. I'm green white in pack three. Do I take the rare so not play against it and cut it from Jay, or do I keep 
or I just keep doing my own thing. Uh, hate drafting is fairly overstated because like a confluence of things need to happen for it to matter where I need to play against Jay. Jay needs to draw it, play it, have it matter. And if all of these things happen, if I had hate drafted, then I would have, you know, but you know, you're losing out on the card you were taking. It's often not worth it. Um, obviously if, if we're, if it's pick seven and there's no cards for me and a good black card, Sorry, Jay. Yeah. I'm going to take it too because I'm going to take anyway. But you're always valuing your opportunity cost against your um, against your payoff. And the payoff is often very low, but if there's no opportunity cost, you do it. So in our colors here, a two, uh, a three for double green is pretty good, but we have hardly any removal in this deck. This is a removal spell. Not the greatest because it's only attacking blocking your tap. The, the life game probably won't matter, but we probably need some kind of removal in our deck right now. Uh, I don't think it's a, it's actually that important. Okay. I think, I think our, so the, the, the theme of our deck is basically a bunch of small creatures and going wide and playing cards like Rabbit Response. What's the point of a removal spell? Why do you play a removal spell in your deck? So you get rid of an opponent's threat. But like why? Like what, what, why do you want to do that? What's the, what's the goal? To stay alive longer, get rid of a threat. Right. So to stay alive longer, right? Is our deck trying to stay alive longer? No, our deck's trying to pump as much damage as it can. Exactly. So like the, so every removal spell we play is one less creature in one play less creature we could for rabbit response to pump. You know, so do you need removal? Yes, but Sonar Strike's a pretty bad removal spell. It's good It's good in bats because the life gain's pretty important. Right. It's not a bad removal spell, but it's also kind of a defensive removal spell too where like they have to attack you, kills attack creature, and if you kill a blocker, they don't take any damage. So it's not great. And Keen Eye Curator is an absolute banger two drop and we are desperate for two drops. Yeah. So a little hard to guess, a little off types, but cards are just insanely good and it's a windmill slam. Modern and limited, back like a million years ago, like 15 years ago in limited, you would take a, a kill spell over, over anything because the creatures were all just so bad that like you could just sit there and like, all right, you have a grizzly bear in play, I'll take two. You know, oh, you have a wind drake in play, I'll take two, I guess, you know, and just sit there and just take damage. So removal was much more premium than it is now. Right. And you, but you needed to kill their Sarah Angel, their Shivan Dragon because you were just going to die to it. Right. You know, uh, whereas yeah. these days, I would rather have a super quality two drop than a removal spell any day of the week. You know, because this is better than anything your opponent's going to play on turn two most of the time. And has a value late in the game, too, where it can exile cards, it can get big, bigger potentially. So this is a windmill, windmill slam, I think. Uh, yeah, you're just going to slam it. All right, pack number two. Deck's got the beats. Right, in a lot of ways, your creatures are kind of like removal spells, right? Where they're like, yeah, they attack and block, you know, just right. So you can't kill your opponent with a Doom Blade. So this is the one, that, this is Valiant, the mechanic that likes to target its own stuff. It's a 3 1 for 2. Uh, we don't, I don't think we need two of those. We already got one. Uh, that's a squirrel, 2 1 for 2, or 2 1 for 2. Then you pay two more. When creature enters, you may forage if you do, but count. We're not really into forage. Our other own color card is here, which is a frog. When it enters, return. So when it enters, return to one turn, you control this. So you have to bounce something to play this. Obviously, that's good if you want to keep, if you have some good ETBs where you want to replay. I'm still probably thinking that's probably the best card in this pack. Um, I think that in a vacuum, you're correct. I think that, like, if you're foraging super hard, the bodyguard is insane. But if you're, if you're in, in a pure vacuum, I think that's probably the best card in the back, uh, but I think that this is not even close. We have to take a two drop here. It's yeah. Not, it's not negotiable. We see more two drops, you know? So, Fair. and then in that case, I think in a vacuum, this is a better card. We are not foraging at all. We have one right. card that makes food. There's an idea we're not going to be many cards in our graveyard. We're not playing many spells either. So like when you play our player move spell, it goes to the graveyard. That plays right. all forage. We're just trying to pump as many creatures down and then pump them. Right. So this card, it's also just a 2-1. The floor is very low. Whereas this card's pretty good in our deck. It's 3-1. It has some value. You can kill a, a Banishing Light or whatever. Uh, we do have a duo that we're probably going to play that can pump it, which is kind of cool too. So pretty easy card here, I think. Yep. You know, it is it worse than these cards in a vacuum? I think yes. But for our deck, it's what we want. So. Yeah. All right, so and they're speaking banishing light. So this is, this is a pretty, pretty, pretty easy pick. So there really isn't as much, much in the back, honestly. This banishing light, which they top tier removal spell. There's a frog that's really do anything, and a land is really do anything. So this is a pretty, yeah, pretty easy a removal pick. spell here, definitely. And this is what we want. So that that bat removal spell is like not great, whereas banishing light is a premium removal spell. You know, usually right. each color is one or two of these where. It just kills anything, no questions asked, doesn't right. for an efficient and cost. Enchantments are harder to remove in limited, so it's more likely to stick around longer and actually keep that card exiled. Yep, so easy pick. Not even, not, not even close. And also, now, this is the point in the draft where 
want to keep an eye on your playable count. So right now we're at 19 playables. Usually I move, I move to the land of the side. So we have 18 playables. You know, we're shooting for, on an arena best of one, you want to have uh, usually 16 lands as the baseline, and then in paper, 70 lands as the baseline, or best of three, because you can, there's a, arena has the hand smoother. Yeah. You know, that works. So, so uh, you know, on arena, we want 24 playables, in paper, you want 23, but we want to be in that range, and we're about five cards off that right now. Okay. So I see, and we have another nettle guard here, which isn't, isn't bad. It's on color. We have uh, equipment, which isn't probably great. That's probably not super great. I mean, three, so three, and then you got to, so three mana for uh, one, one vigilance and reach. Not sure that's great. Yeah, it's not a very good card. It's like playable in the Valiant decks as a way to trigger Valiant over and over and over and over again. Uh, kind of like Shuko Nadu style, we just keep yeah. reading it. Uh, but not, it's just a bad card. I think probably Nettle Guard here, but another Nettle Guard's probably the, probably the pick here. Well, let's see, we got a Raccoon Warrior, and it's three, four, four for, four, four for four. That's got the offspring on it. We, 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 we have one already. You said what? We have one is already. From oh, that's right. We do. We, yeah. we do. Yeah. Probably another. Probably the another two drop. Is that yeah. what? Not, not. It's not even close. Yep. Guards. Guards. Great. No, we don't need another four drop. We're obviously pretty going to that part of the curve. You know, we have four 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 drops already, which is not which is not great, honestly, and just two drop over anything. So, slam two drop, and then we get uh, a little, little thin here. Yeah, we're definitely, um, let's see. So, let's see. There's our own crypto card. And in battle card, you may sacrifice. So, that's another, that's another go find a land card. Uh, Grota's not going to be very good. Don't really need mana smoothing. And there's a land. So, there's three lands in this pack. And this pack's not very good. I would say. Yeah, I mean, those are good cards that are not in our colors. The Swarm's pretty good. Right. Honestly, Heap Darvis is the example. Heap Darvis Heap, 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 Heap is great. It's a really good card. But why is it not good in our deck? I mean, well, I mean, we're two colors. Do we really need, do we really need, um, do we really need mana smoothing? Probably not. And we're, we're, right. we're, we're not really, we're not in the Forge deck, so it wouldn't help us with being able to sack it for food. Right. So, like, this this card is a, is a lot of meat on this card as far as, like, things it can do. It ramps. It's forageable. It's, you know, it goes to the graveyard. But, like, we just don't do any of those things. We don't care. You know? Right. So, this is what it is. So, yeah. Uh, and then we have Seed Pod Squires also on color, too. But, like, this card just sucks. It's just like a... If we had a four drop, you could play it. Nothing out of the end of the world to play it. You know, it does target things over and over again. It's with Valiant cards. You have two Nettle Guards now. So it's a little bit of value there, but it's pretty bad. We're already a bunch of playables. Grotto surveils. I don't think I'd want to play Grotto this deck with like a green green card and a green white card and stuff. So I might just like Squire here. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to play it, but whatever. If they if like the last, you know, whatever eight picks go horribly wrong, playing it wouldn't be the most embarrassing thing ever. Right. All right. So up? nothing super great here. We have we have another where well, the cure came back or the cure's back. We have the bat. In color, we have the cash crab, which is great in the squirrel deck. We have another. We have another one of these. We already have one of these, don't we? Yeah, we nope. don't. Nope, we didn't pick one of those. This is the mana dork. Oh, that's mana dork. Okay, so we have we. But it is another two drop, even though it's not a great two drop. Um. Nothing really, and then we already have plenty of those. We already have one of those. Probably this is this is uh, of the cards. That's probably the, it's two drop. It's probably the only one that you would you would look at. Um, unless find that it's not, we're not really gaining or losing life that much. What's, uh, yeah, so this card is not a great in our deck, you know, this is more of like a, you know, like a slower deck, rampy kind of card. More dying for two drops, and this card's fine. It's a creature, whatever, you know, it pumps to rabbit response, it casts our four drops, you know, it casts the guy in turn three, it's fine, it's just fine. You know, we're happy to take this card. We want two, is really, really bad, it's two. This pack has gone very well for us as far as our plan of like filling out our twos. We've moved on from having like, you know, three two drops to six two drops, which is great. And uh, things are shaping out pretty well. Pretty well. Yep. So this, now one of these, and we have, uh, so we're not in bats and birds at all. I don't think we need one of those. Here, do you do you go here? Is, is this the pick for, for where we are? You tell me. To me, it looks like it's probably. I mean, nothing else jumps out at me as being great here, for what we're trying to do. I mean, I don't know if we need another O2. Um, I mean, I know we have frogs. But I don't know if we need another O2. The off-color cards, nothing there special, and then the other card, the 
the bat bird. It is a two drop, but we need seven two drops and we're not really in bats and birds at all. It is a flyer, but we're not in that at all. Okay, so I guess so, it, so a possible army we could take here is also this guy too. It is a green five drop, but it's not very good. So one of the things here, again, trying to look at that like that cross-pollination a little bit, right? This is obviously a bad card. This is a very, very good bad card. This is one of the premium bad two drops. Uh, it gains your life constantly. It turns all your bad stuff. But what does this card do? Forget bats. Forget Bloombro. Forget bats. Forget everything you know about magic in this set. Just look at this card in a vacuum. What is this card good with? This card... Is pro actually, this card's probably decent in our deck because we're trying to pump a lot of creatures out, and every creature we put in play, we gain life. Right. And, like, is that insane? No. No. But, but it's life it's, is life. It's fine. You know, it's a card that attacks with rapid response or whatever. Uh, we go turn to this guy, turn three, hop to it, gain three life. It's not bad either. You know, so is, was, is this card going to go in our most ideal version of this deck? No. No. If we could, you know, if we could hand select the, the, the 24 cards we're going to play, we would not play this card. But. Drafts are not an ideal world, you know, right. and this card does enough things where it's, it's fine, you yeah. know. It's totally and, and it is a flyer, so it does have some evasion to it. and probably won't turn it sideways that often, but it definitely has some, you know, it, well, it, it gets one damage in. It'll turn, it'll turn sideways every turn, I think. Yeah, it's, and it's true, it gets one damage in. And for one, and for one, just fine, you know, so definitely don't want another druid. Um, we're hopefully not playing the first copy. And then Bother's Talent, again, it's a really cool card. does nothing in our deck. Our deck's all creatures. This is a, this is a non-creature kind of card. Uh, yeah. So yeah, pretty easy duo here, I think. And, uh... <laughs> Kind of a thin pack here. Yep. The only really own color creature we have, the own color thing we have is here. So, do the do the modes, the first two modes come up? Maybe. Draw a card, create a food's not terrible for two mana. I mean, I know we're not really into food, but drawing a card's always nice. So, this card is good in our deck for one simple reason. Uh, there are rabbits in the art. <laughs> there you go. No, this, this card's obviously, it's just okay. You know, it's, yeah. not, it's not a great card. I wouldn't be embarrassed to play it. Nothing else here is remotely playable. This card's very bad. It's just a bad card in general. It's also just not only good in the Valiant deck. So yeah. Will we play this? Yeah, I prefer not to, but it's fine. Honestly, there's plenty of you know enchantments and flyers to kill. Making a food is a buyout is fine. So sure. So now we're back to our original to our, our pack we opened in our first pack. It's pretty thin. Some on color cards. Probably not gonna play this, but we're not playing any of these cards either. So no, sure, whatever. So it's fine. This 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 yeah. the end of this will go pretty quickly. Yeah, we really want to pick up like one or two more playables because I would say two to three more playables. I don't want to play with my caller. Well, if I have to, but uh, Bruce is castable. We're going to take it. I mean, we yeah. could play it, but not thrilled about it. And we got, yeah, it's, it's, it's in and out of it here. You know, so take the playable card we can put in our deck. A short bow could, in theory, go in our deck also. Yep. All right, so not not a, a good last few picks there. We're, we're hard or too short here for sure, but let's go to our building and take a look. All right, so and this and this is another place where I, I think being a commander player, it's harder to 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 look. So we've drafted, we've got our cards. Now, what do you keep? What do you cut? Right. And, and I think if you help already with kind of talking about the theme, what's the theme of this deck? Where our deck is go wide, draw as many creatures as we can, and pump them. So we want to we at the so the cards we want to look at are cards that meet that kind of theme. And I also like when you drafted, you kind of did the sideboard too. You kind of things. We're probably not going to play. You kind of win the sideboards. So we're kind of, instead of just having 40 cards to look at now, we kind of already have thinned our deck out, so to speak, where we're looking at, we really only need to cut one or two cards here. If we're not looking at the sideboard, and these are the 25 we're choosing from. Yes. So you should be doing, obviously on Arena, you can just build your deck as you draft. But while you are drafting in paper, you should be building your deck as you are drafting. You are, every card you select, you should look at the cards you already have. And, okay, it's two drop, put it in with two drops. So you should have one drop, two drop, three yep. drop, four drop, in order, and be building your deck and be counting it as you're going and know how many cards you have. Most good players will finish a draft and just, get, just go get lands. Don't even need to build your deck. You know, like, yeah. so... so and, and, and that's definitely, as a, as a newer player to limited, I'm sitting there looking at 40, you know, 45 cards, like, well, where do I start? Yeah. Because you, I didn't build my deck during the draft. You started process. in pack one. And, and that also, that process helps you inform your draft where you're looking, oh, I only have two two drops. That's a problem. Right. You know, and that's because that, you're... You're not sl you're not picking forty five cards to build a seal deck out of. You are drafting a deck on the fly. Right. And you have you have you've yeah. aged you when, you when you can do that. So, so we have some of the cards we got late in this pack: uh, the short bow, the guard mouse, the bruiser, and the druid uh, from earlier. That are all pretty bad. I think that these are all the cards to the left of head, head of the homestead and left are the cards I would like to play. Um, Formation's fine. I'm not, not embarrassed about it. You know, the, again, the duo is not great, but it's fine. 
you know, and then, uh, but these are the cards that I would actively like not like to have in my deck. Sure. Uh, you know, Bruiser's not really on plan. Garbash is bad. I mean, you know, and Shortbow is also pretty bad in our deck. And then the, the Druid's also pretty bad. I don't really do that much. Uh, so, but the thing is, though, if you cut all four of these, now you have 21 cards. Right. We need to add at least three cards. So this is an important part of your deck building. I think that Modern Day Limited is uh, a lot about how bad are your last, like, five cards. And a lot of well, limited games are won and lost by that. So if you're they're, like 19 to 23rd playables, how, how, right. how good or bad are those cards? Back in the day, there were a bunch of shit cards in back. Like, we're going to take a little shoulder, shoulder memory lane here. Like, back in the day, all right, back in my day, we had cards like Chimney Imp. Can't spell it right. This was, this was a card you would get in your booster back. It was a 5 mana 1 2 flyer with a marginal ability. Uh, we had cards like even, what is it? even. And, and, and back then that card was bad, but it oh, heinously bad. Uh, but today, I mean, you'd get laughed out of the draft for playing. That I card. mean, you get laughed out of the draft yeah, back, back then too. Just it's like it was a card that was worth where the card was. Where's um? It's got even trooper. This is a four mana one one flyer. You can discard a card to pump it a little bit. You yeah, know, that's and, pretty bad. And like these cards were like in the booster packs, and you would literally never put them into your deck. And there are. There used to be a lot of these. You know, it would also be like the, the, the you know, a race, one mana instant, Troy Enchantment. You never yeah. put that card in your deck. So the, there were a lot of bad cards. So like getting up to 23 playables was a challenge sometimes. These days it's not because every card's playable. But because of that, it shifts where like now the worst cards are not the cards that are unplayable. It's the cards that aren't great. Right. So, but yeah. So um, as far as so cards, so cards to add here. So what, what do I want to add here? So uh, we had to add three cards to our deck. So, you tell me. What three cards do you want to add to our deck? And don't look at chat. <laughs> chat, stop helping. All right? Oh, chat's over there trying to... Don't look at chat. No, 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 chat. I'm not looking. I'm not don't looking. Don't look at chat. They're all dumb anyway. <laughs> They're all dumb anyway. There you go. Uh, do we, as one of the cards, do we put the... Uh, the land back in our deck, that uh, Oak oh, Hollow. I'm sorry. This, this card's in the deck. When, when, oh, okay. when, 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 when I build the deck, I always use spells first, then lands. So. Okay. I, I thought you'd put it in the sideboard. Yeah, we were almost surely playing this card, but also I just want the number to say 24, which makes it easier. So Okay. So you want 24 playables without that land? Correct. Yeah, this is definitely where I would say uh, definitely a weakness looking at these and trying to figure out what to add back. Well, it's so like your, your, so make your, your signal processing a little easier, right? Remove the noise. Uh, so right. remove any cards that are completely off color. Right. We're not playing the cards that are off color, right? Um, and then we pretty clearly can just get the, the artifacts are out too, right? I mean, like, we're not playing the bell. The bow is on our list, but it's just a really bad card. It's not very good in this deck. Mascot, we're not playing other colors, so we don't need that card. And I'll tell you those cards. Take those out too. So now we're down to uh, seven, eight possible cards. Sorry, seven cards. So the land is also in anyway. So seven cards. We need to pick three of them. Let's put this in there. Yeah, okay. I'm not. I know. I know you cut the the uh, druid over there, but it is a one drop. Uh, I don't. I mean, it's a creature. Is it terrible? It's not great, but it probably does give us a one drop that's not completely horrible. It's pretty bad. It is pretty bad. Yeah, one mana for a, a one through the gains of life is is not not very good. You know, uh, there's a little bit of utility as far as like targeting the guards. You can make it do a four four for a turn. It goes back to make a four two, which is great anyway. So like, I think that the the first one's really really easy. Um, it's just the card that fits the theme bird like, as well. It's cheap. Uh, is, is it the Palm Prophets back in the deck? No, I, nope. I think it's a High Stride. A so high Stride, okay. High yeah. Stride's fine. It's not great, you know. Chroma gets better, sure. But, like, we're attacking with this deck a lot. You know, just attack. It's cheap enough where, like, I can go two drop, attack on my little guard, you block, pump it, play that two drop, go. It's just a yeah. fine tempo card. It's just fine. It's what it is. So that's one. Uh, I mean, put, we, the, does the Bruiser go back in the deck? I mean, we're not expending great, but, I mean, it is a, it is a four or five. It does have trample. I mean, if after that, I mean, if we do expand it, it gets. I mean, now now it's a you know a six six. Um, yeah, I think Bruiser. So like, we're what cards are the worst basically? It's gonna be, so like, I think the worst cards here. I think the Druid doesn't work. No. I think the oops, uh, I can't hide it, but 
Uh, recy- I don't th- the, the, the peerless recycling, I don't, I don't think that does anything for us. Yeah, I think it's probably the worst of the bunch, honestly. And then the the guard bounce is just, just bad, dude. It's just, it's just a 4 mana, 3-4. We're not valuing a lot. So those three are gone. So I've got that a Prophet, Bruiser, and Squire. I mean, two cards. Prophet's just too hard to cast, I think. We're not really super interested in that. Honestly, the Squire's like... It's not the worst card ever. It's a three-three flyer. Has a little bit of upside. Plus all the nettle guards, whatever. Yeah, I think you're taking and that. Then, and I think I think the Bruiser is the other pick. Yeah, we got I there. think it's probably Bruiser. Like, it, it's just big. At least this, this is we're bottom of the barrel. We really don't want to play these cards, but right. given all the other options, I think that's where it's at. Uh, so I think it's those two cards left. So then we have the land. Uh, important to note again: you whenever you play these lands, you got to check on them. How many spells do I have that are green? We only have. I have high stride. We added that high stride. We have Paw Patch Formation. We have Polywall. So you have three spells that this thing can't cast. I think it's fine. So I think it's fine. We, have a lot, we do have quite a few green creatures that it can cast. Yep. So we have 14 uh, white cards, 12 green cards. Uh, noting that this can't play the green spells. Um, and noting also we have some we have green one drops. This is 14, 15. Yeah, we'll just play. I think this is fine. So play 8-8. Play eight, eight. Uh, in in best of three or in paper, I would cut the bruiser and play a seventeen land. I'd play a f- forest probably because we have the curator and the one drop. But either way, that's my that's my issue. So this is our deck. Um, it's fine. I think we're a few cards short, which is bad, honestly. But we have a few good rares. Our curve's pretty good. You know, you have Phineas curator. Uh, you know, decent decent like top end draws with hop to it and harvest right host. A couple of rule spells. Any game we go, Mike Caller into a two drop rare is going to be a pretty good one for us too. So, um, and how much of that is uh, just bots and quick draft, and just we just didn't get the, the cards at the end? Um, I wouldn't complain about the bots. Like the it's the bots aren't perfect, but they're fine. You know, they're not uh, bad enough for you to say. Always, oh, if I had been doing a premier draft with people, I wouldn't even be in the same situation. They're just less volatile. Gotcha. Whereas people, a color might be really open, or they might open a rare and change colors, or they, it's weirder things happen, uh, and it's more dynamic. But Understood. Otherwise, yeah. So, text fine. So let's uh, fire up and get into, uh, get into the games. And I would say one thing, um, another thing that's harder here than in um, Commander, where you get a free mulligan, is what to keep, what to toss back. Here, we have two... We have two Forests, we have a bunch of white cards, and we have one turn two drop. Do you keep a no white hand to have a great two drop, or is this a mulligan? You tell me. This this is where I just really don't know. This hand's rough. I think I would keep it though. Uh, Curator is excellent. We're on the draw. You know, like how much on the draw versus being on the play I changes would, your mind. If we're on the play, is this a mulligan? Yes. Uh, That's kind of I think with the extra draw, extra card draw, I keep. Uh, and there's a good chance we don't draw, draw planes and die, but Curator is really good, holds the fort really well, and if we do draw planes, our hand's great. So yep. that's also an out too. So also, it's not just your planes that are outs. What are my green two drops? This is also right. a mana door. Great, you know, do I, am I playing a fountain board bell? What other ways do I have to get the mana or cash right. grab? So, so that's great. So there's a Reaver, Weaver, and uh, I got the Curator. They go Island, Island, and they cast Boomerang on our land. They play Gossip's Talent. It's there's, our, there's our plane, so, yeah. but I think here we still play the Force and we play the, the double green. Well, so that, now I've, this is a very important flexion point. So we have two options. We can play the Curator or we can play the Root Weaver. Why would we play one or the other? Curator puts a bigger body on the board. Um, the, uh, let me see. So this puts a bigger body and we puts a 3-3 three, three on the board. Not necessarily going to get the 4-4 four, four yet, but that's a bigger body. That is a mana door, but we don't really have mana prongs right now. I mean, we do have both colors because we have the other one in our hand. I think you play the 3-3 three, three here. So this is you're thinking about this turn right now. Uh-huh. I'm thinking about the entire game. Okay. So, sure, this turn is bigger, but if you play this thing, what happens next turn? Okay, got it. What, what happens? Now Now I can theoretically play a four drop. Or, more importantly, because what do we have, we have in our hand? We have, to, we have to build multiple twos, right? So now we can go Curator and Metal Guard. Oh, we can play two, yeah, because we have four mana. Right. So this sort of mana efficiency is really, really important and limited. And it's, it's the backbone of all, all good limited players. Of being able to spend your mana effectively and plan out your first few turns in the game. Every play you make in a game unlimited 
is not about the turn you're playing it. It's about gotcha. three turns. Because you're not swinging with a 1-3, so you might as well use its ability. Right. You could swing with it, but in this case, the mana is important. Well, it, it, I, think what, I think that the, the point you're making is good, but you're focusing on the wrong thing. Uh, whereas you're thinking about, I want to attack a lot of damage, right? But you're thinking about it in the small scope of, of the attack phase of next turn. I'm thinking about the next three attack phases. So yes, we will attack for less next turn, but the turn after we attack for double. Yeah. Right, because we're going to have the curator and the, the guard, and we also have the metal too. So we might even be able to set up a spot where like right. we're attacking for so much damage to have the block, use our yep. trick, and we're just making a much bigger snowball. So yep. we're taking a little more time to push it this turn, so our next turn's bigger. Yep. So we play the land here, and then you play the... Um, so you drop out the... Uh, so do you play the... Uh, do you play the bigger creature here, or do you play the Nettle Guard here? Well, we play both, right? We, we have yep, that's right. You got enough mana to play both. So. But do you want to play the duo? Because we want to get, we want to play before, before creatures yeah, we, gain life. Yeah, right? we play the duo because, yeah, I think the, yeah, I think the duo here because then we gain life off the other things. And so, it's a flyer. So I tricked you. <laughs> uh, where, yes, if the if the goal of this game was to gain the most life possible. Yeah, we play that, but we're not. We're, exactly. we're trying to we're trying to go wide, so we 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 play the we play the exactly. And then also, it's not just about pure mana efficiency, which is this is, this is a very mana efficient turn. So now it's turn three. We have six power in play. It's also about our hand, or what's going to happen next turn. Well, next turn we're going to attack. Yeah. If they have blockers, we have a great, we have a great trick, or we have a, have a five drop to play too, and keep keep the pressure going. So yeah, they play a duo. They also play this terrible card. This card is awful. They play this card, uh, but. Uh, play a duo, and this is a defensive duo, because it's not a very good duo, right? Because it didn't pump any creatures, so. Right. But it is, it is a 3 4. So they mill over a land, which is actually good for our uh, curator as far as getting unique types. So you play a planes, and now what? I think you. Uh, do you play the 5 5 here, or do you attack and pump something? You tell me. We really don't have anything to get them, I and we don't have things in the graveyard to get the five five going. We're still zero one. I think you probably attack here and then and then look at um, pumping something. But you tell me. So yeah, I this is a spot where we would love to cast our five drop, which keep, but like we can't afford to attack for six here, and we have a uh, the metal also. Yeah, something to make as well. So, um, uh, I'm pretty sure. so, so yeah, so we're gonna go to combat. We're gonna attack. Uh, this would kill this. And donation point damage is good. And they have to make a choice also as far as they're blocking. They're probably going to block here. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to. Not blocking is is horrible. Just absolutely astoundingly horrible. You can never not block here in Modern Day Limited. Even if you think we have a trick. Because now two things happened. One, we got that much damage. And two, now what's, what's now what we, now, now what do we do? Now you play your five drop. Right. Now we're just jamming a five drop. So now we're, now you have yourself six damage. Yeah. yeah not even... blocking there did not make a lot of sense. Yes, you only have one creature, but you just took six to the face. Right. And the thing is, they said they're so they're the problem was their answer. Our question was we're attacking. We're saying we have a trick because we're going to get into a three four. And they said their their response was binary. It was do you have a trick or not? I think you do. So I'm not going to block. They right. didn't think about the consequences of not blocking. We're still going to have a trick next turn. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, so so they played a fight. They played a bike spell. Right. So or a fight spell. He's not a bike spell. A fight spell. Right. So um, so this makes a little sense though. So now this this absolves their play a little bit. Or if they have this fight spell and they need to have a creature in play to use it next turn, that makes a little sense of a reason of why you would do that. But so they level down a bit. Out blinks just fine. I uh, have a four five a three one. Uh, this thing expends four. So what's our play now? Well, we. We don't have, we play the land, but we don't have, uh, we, uh, well, there's four mana. So do you go, do you, well, you play the two mana and then you, and then you got the, you got, then you got your pump spell, but do you use it premature to get to the four mana? Why would you? I don't, I don't think there's a reason to. Right. So just attack. So we attack with, yeah. But we want to give us the option. Right. Now, this is obviously based up to our opponent, where we clearly played a two drop first and then attacked, which is a weird, why would you do that otherwise? It's a weird thing to do. Uh, so we're probably going to expend here, but and now they're, now they're making good blocks. It's fine. So now we'll go plus uh, one plus one here because it also has the value ability. It'll be, it'll be a four four. That's yep. a trade, and then two extra damage here plus expend is two more damage. So yep. So this and this maximizing our trick. And I get to kill their thing. Deal eight. Awesome. That's all great for us. They go to six. We have a four to zero board advantage. This is also why this card's bad. 
Uh, these like it just doesn't. Yeah. They, they spent what two, four, eight mana in this card. It just didn't do anything. And it didn't do anything for yeah. them, right? So uh, cool. So uh, one and up, good clean win. And the other thing, I will say we are somewhat fortunate because I think that that first game we just played was a really good example of a bunch of really straightforward limited concepts that a lot of players just don't intuitively think about that are like the bread and butter for any good limited player. Yep. So that's good. So Okay, so we're on the we're on the play. I mean we're on the draw. We have three we have both colors of mana. We have our spell, but we really have nothing to do on turn one and turn two other than mana. I mean we really have nothing to play. Because we have to have creatures to play the combat spell. Uh the for foundation, I guess we could draw a card, create a food. This is probably a give back. You can't mulligan this. You can't. Like, I I agree with you. This hand's not great, but we're on the draw, and we have a, we have a cycler on turn two. Like our deck's full of two drops and three drops. You just can't, you just can't mulligan this yeah. hand. I, I I I I appreciate the gusto honestly, because I think it's important that like think people you know it's you need to know what your deck is trying to do, and we are trying to beat down, and like you want to have a good curve out, uh, but you just can't mulligan this hand unfortunately. Like you know. Two mana cycle, playing a three drop is totally reasonable. You know, yeah. is there a chance we'll just draw like land, land, land and not do much? Yeah, we have two five drops, so they're fine. Yeah. And there you go, there's two drops. So there you go. So you, you, yeah. you, have, to, you have to have a little faith in your deck sometimes, you know, so. I got you. So play land, you want to play the draw card, make a food, or play, play, play two drop? Uh, I think we, since we have the man, I think we put a creature on the board. And I'm not sure, drawing is great, but I think a creature on the board is probably more important. Yeah, that, that was a trick, a trick question. Yeah, it's it's. I, you, you'd be very, very hard pressed to drop a scenario where you wouldn't play this. If you like really wanted to play on their rules. For example, if you're Phineas there, a really, really good two mana rare, I might have waited and played the pop patch formation because like them saying go on turn two, not playing a two drop. Right. Blue Red Kid has a number, number of common kill spells. It's also a common counter spell too. So like, we could be a little more stingy with our good rare and just like, I would only do that in the case of having something else to do. Yeah. Uh, I would never just not, I would rarely just not play it, but this card is whatever. Just play it, they kill it, who cares? Yep. So, so we baited out the removal spell to not use on something better. Yes, now, now do. Now I think well, the only thing you have to play now is the, the only only thing you have mana for is that. I mean, that's what you play. Well, it's an instant. Should, 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 should we play it? No, I think we actually hold it back. Uh, I disagree, actually. Really? So, they started a, wow, they started a boar off their thing, they draw two, that's interesting. So, we do have one drops in our deck, right? We've got, uh, on tap, not on. So, and if we draw a creature, we want to play it, right? Yeah. And there isn't... The only... What's the benefit for waiting? Other than holding mana open and telling you might have something to do, not not much. Right. So, they, okay, they could play a flyer or enchantment, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and they are blue, but our hand's pretty juicy. It really kills spell in our hand. We'll just play it. And the, the question here, of course, is we have one white one drop and one green one drop. Yeah. So what mana do you leave up? I am going to leave the better one. So I'm going to play this draw card. Yep. You know, draw land. Sure. So low opportunity cost there, right? What we, yeah. We, we, we gave up a little bit of equity as far as that maybe playing an enchantment. Well, we have land and we made a but, food, which could be relevant. Yeah, <laughs> we can, we're, we're drawing all, all the lands here. All right. So play land and now what? We have our little combat trick that we can't really use. Uh... I don't, I don't think you eat the food here. I mean, I don't think we're in, we're in gain in life now. Is there any, and there's nothing else we can play. Yep. Stick up. Yep. All right. So they have their angler grows. They play a non creature spell. It's like permanent prowess. Let's see this right here. Just up a little bit. There we go. Save for two. I'm not doing anything. And they got six cards in hand. They play a Cindering Cutthroat. It's not ideal. Uh, this is a creature that, you know, gets bigger when they hit us. Um, whatever. So, end step. What's up, Blue? Thanks, 37. Do you eat the food here to gain three? Because we got nothing better to do? Or do you or do you hold it? You tell me. I mean, it's not. we're not foraging. The food's not really doing much for us. I guess you just gain it here. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's a reason to hold it back. Correct. There, I, don't, I don't think there is either. You know, if we had one or two forage cards in our deck, maybe we would consider it, but there's actually just nothing. There's nothing I think in our, it's the entire thing in our deck. So, on that, we draw Phineas. It's probably a pretty nice, pretty nice draw. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, you, I guess you all... Is there ever a scenario where you don't play a land first? I mean, I, I guess if you have landfall ability, you do. But otherwise, is there a, there's no reason to hold back a land, I guess. I guess here the play is uh, 
Well, you got Phineas, and you got the five. You got the five drop. Probably Phineas, and then you got a. I, I'm not sure the. I'm not sure. Well, with what they have on board, is the bigger creature better? Well, why would you play Phineas? What's your goal of playing Phineas? I guess it really doesn't do much right now because we're not going to swing. We're not going to swing with it immediately. So I guess you play the five drop. So in theory, Phineas when Phineas attacks, you put a counter on all your rabbits. So you could in theory go head a homestead next turn and then attack and pump it. But that requires them to clean attack, have them not kill it, and then also the opportunity cost there is wasting three mana. We yeah. don't, we pump something. We, 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 if they burn something, we could save it in theory, like maybe. But like we just get a board waste with so much, so much mana. I don't think. Yep. And also, what do we know about their hand right now? They have five cards in it. Beyond that, we know we know more than that. Do we? Yep. Okay, I'm missing what we know there. Well, what happened last turn? What did they not do? Oh, they did not play any. They did not um, play a land. Correct. So their hand is all what? All non non land cards. Right, all spells. Right. All so spells. so they have, they have all gas in their hand. So rule tricks, whatever. So I think what we're going to do here is just stave off the uh, the beats here a little bit. I think we want to play the most defensive card possible. And the Bruiser does that. It's just a four five. We're going to play it. Block with it. They can give us menace if they want to. Great. Spend two mana on menace and not have mana do anything else. That's the problem. Yep. Block this thing, block that thing. Maybe they have a kill spell. Maybe they have a trick. Do we care about this card that much? Not super. It's not really what our deck's trying to do. Stop gap. Yeah. You know, it's whatever. It's fine. So they play a duo. They're going to surveil two. They're forfeiting attacks for the turn. And they're just like, oh, it's a cool. So now our bridge is here. We draw a Baker's Bane duo. Gift and subs. Thanks, Vader. You're great. Uh, so now what? Uh, play the land, and then do you play head of the homestead or do you play Phineas? You tell me. You tell me, and then why is the important part. I think probably you play the the Phineas with pump when it attacks. We're not going to attack with it this turn. I think you probably play the head of the homestead this turn. So I think I disagree. Okay. Uh, we have six mana. Uh-huh. But it'd be most mana efficient possible. Playing out of the homestead doesn't really do a ton on this board. They have a 3-4. We're not really attacking with yeah. it. So our highest upside play is trying to set up a Phineas attack. Okay. Right? Is that possible with our cards in our hand? I think it is. We have a removal spell and a trick. And we get to play Phineas and Baker's Bane duo also. We have two mana up for a trick. Then once we untap, we have a removal spell and a trick to push it through. Okay. And if things work out really, really well... We can play head of homestead and then attack and pump everything up as well. So Sounds good. And we get another food, and then we will expend four off of this. So now is our six six attacking? Probably so. Well, they could double block and they could get rid of it, but it puts them, it lets them make a decision. Do they want to give up creature or not? It's a tough call. Uh, because we're if they take six here, they attack back for a ton. Uh and we don't want to use our pump spell defensively. It's a really important heuristic. Uh, you almost never want to use pump spells defensively. Right. Uh, because they're all their mana's untapped, and they have access to everything they could ever do. And if they two for one you, the game's over. Yep. So I'm just saying, I think you hold back here. Uh, I'm a big part of attacking a lot in limited. I think it's really, really important to be aggressive and keep attacking. But I think in this spot, we're giving up too much. And also, we can, we can try and force them to make the same action. They can't beat this board right now. Right. Uh, one one caveat would be that if we're trying to induce our opponent to attack us to clear up better attacks for Phineas, could be a, a thing. It's it's honestly it requires more more thought and discussion than I could I had it with, with the rope going, but I think not attacking is fine. But I think if you, attacking is also reasonable if your goal is to clear the path for Phineas next turn. But we'll see. So here's this talent card again. Everyone's playing this talent card. All right, so they prowess permanent counter here, temporary counter here. So, every creature ETB surveil one. Whenever you attack a creature power through us, can't be blocked this turn. And then, whenever creature comes up to a player, you can exile it. So, yeah, this card's really bad. Don't put it in your deck. It's just. And then we have a rough shout duo. So they, well, 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 what do people see about it that makes it good? They think the unblockable is decent, or. It's it's funny. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to the commander thing. This is the commander card. They just see, oh, this could do all these things. But spending eight mana in a game unlimited to do nothing is just not a thing you, you can do. So, right. they also screwed up here and played the. Uh, ah, I guess they didn't screw up. So they played uh, the duo, could have played the duo first, and then played talent to expand, they get plus, plus one and trample. This way they get the surveil. So they're valuing surveil and a longer game over burst damage right now. So go to our end step. I'm gonna crack our food. Yep. Or discuss that. And now it gets untapped and think about what we want to do here. So we draw land, which is cool, because it, 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 it does open up playing head homestead and still attacking. Uh, they have Three, three, four, three, three, four, and three, two. And the metal would make us into a four, four 
which is reasonable enough. So, uh, now what? Do you make the bodies, or do you, uh, or do you do the bite spell? Or you, the tell, fight spell? you tell me. I think, I think you put the more creatures out. So now you're. I think once again you're thinking in sort of a, a, a smaller term. Like, uh-huh. well, what can I do this second right now? But again, this is about a, a whole scope of the game. Clearing and, out the board long term is probably better than putting a bunch of creatures down right now. No, I okay. agree with you. I think your play is correct. Okay. Uh, I think the important thing is making sure you come to the right conclusion for the right reasons. Too. Understood. Understood. It's like it's like a math. You check your work or whatever. So I think our goal here is when Phineas attacks, we pop up all rabbits and we draw a card. Yep. Do we care if Phineas dies this turn? Probably not. Right. It is job. If we pump all of our stuff up and draw a card, that's awesome. So we get to expend both of these. And now I'm just in for a freaking Leroy, honestly. I think we are, our double pump spells are great. Our yeah. attacks are pretty good. I don't always, I, again, the, the rope's going, I'm talking. I have to, I have to think about all, all the blocks, but right. everything here looks pretty good attacking and blocking wise. So, yep, and, yeah. and we drew a good card for later. Right. So, the pump, so we, we just made our, we just increased our board by a ton. Anyway, yeah, four, three, and two, two, twos. And we have this great trick also, which could potentially be a two for one. And they're super inclined to block this anyway. And again, if they block with the 4-3 here, we pump it and trade. That's not ideal, but the end result, you know, what's the, what's, when all is said and done and the dust settles, what's it look like? And it looks pretty good for us. Our board state looks better than theirs. Right. So, and again, we're also following this up with two removal spells too. Right, so, sure. Like, I would, I would guarantee we're casting this in this combat step. I, I can't picture a way they would block. Well, we would we, not. We, we would not cast this. Because they have to block. Right. So yeah, they're gonna block. So this is fine. So now we're gonna metal. Yeah, we cast that. We put and then uh, this has vigilance to reach. So we're gonna put plus the plus one here. Put this anywhere else for two. Wait, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, plus two is here. This would be a four four. It still dies. Yeah, this is here. This is here. And three is on that. So boom, deal eleven damage. That, and then we deal a bunch of damage. So Phineas is dead. Oh no, we lost our bomb rare. But again, we're not focused on keeping our bomber alive. We're focused on the goal. It did of its job. The goal of winning the game. Right, and it did its job. It, it allowed us to get into a, to a profitable situation in attacking. Right, and now next turn we have double kill spells, and we have an insanely uh, huge board. We're gonna have a six six trample, a bunch of creatures. That's awesome for us. So they play an otter, and they're not even gonna offspring it because they need to do other things. They're gonna surveil. And are they gonna pump the town here? I think that's right. To make something unblockable, is that what they're gonna do? It, that would be that would make much sense because what that doesn't if they do that, yeah, then what happens, <laughs> yeah. right? So they have an assault, they have a rule spell, sure. So fires some triggers. Uh, this thing is bigger. This thing gets temporarily bigger. They get a duo trigger, but now at this point, we don't really care about these duo triggers, these prowess triggers, because like, go ahead, sure, take nine. Who cares? Yeah, you know, that's fine. Now we're on to having kill them. So yeah. That's also a good draw, too. So, sure, they're dead like seven different ways now. So, let's play a rule spell, kill a blocker, then we can grab a response or polywallop. Your choice. How do you want to kill him? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, polywallop first. Sure. So, a wallop, kill this, that expends, and now we should get jammed. And you can see here how, how, good, how good the duo was this game. Like, is it totally on plan? I mean, no. No. But it's just a really good card. Yeah. You know, so... All right, game three. Hopefully another opponent that plays that bad blue talent. <laughs> there you go. Uh, all right, so... Okay, so we are on the play now. Mm-hmm. We have we have both colors of mana, and we've got... We've got some things to do on the first turn. We have one, we have one creature there. We have a pump spell. We have a... Is this a keep? You tell me. It's borderline, but it, uh, being on the play... I would probably keep it. What would you do? Yeah, again, it's, it's not great as you've identified, but you can't ball against sand. Yeah. Again, we have a three drop and a four drop and a card. I think you do on turn two. I yep. mean, it's not the best three drop, and it's not a great four drop because like we want to play this later in the game. We have more creatures in play. Yeah. But you just you just can't ball against this. So one important thing is you prefer if you're playing arena is if you have the option to be playing a plains or a forest here. Uh, you play the play the plains because if you if you play the forest and they play a one drop, arena will give you priority. Because you can cast high stride, and the only card in the entire form that you can have there is high strides. So they kind of know what you got, right? So most people won't notice that, but good players will. It's just like a little li- right. Why did the game thing. pause? Well, they must have something they can cast on one green man. Right. So they play a blacksmith's talent. So this makes a sword tokens and equipment plus almost one, and then you can level it up to equip for free and level it again to give double strike and haste. This card's very very good. Uh, but first so again, a better class than we've seen in the previous games. Much better, yeah. And then this thing destroys an enchantment, kills a flyer, or draws a card, makes a food. They play a short bow. That card is less good. But so 
from this, again, if you haven't played the format a lot, it'd be, this would be a harder thing to make, but this is probably a white, uh, a white red mouse deck because these cards are really good in the Valiant deck. You wouldn't really play this card in a non Valiant deck typically, so they're probably a red one. You're playing it because you want to target your end stuff with it. Right. So, end step. What are we going to do? This is the end step. Sorry, my microphone's over here. So, end step. What are we doing? Do we do we draw here and create the food? I mean, we've got nothing else to do. And I don't see a reason to hold that back. I mean, it's not like we're going to. I mean, we could destroy their class, but is that really worth it? It's all I mean, are, how good it, I mean, it's a pretty good class, but I say probably destroying it's not the end of the world. I mean, it kind of gets them off their game plan. we got nothing else to do. I think I'd rather draw a card. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So they, they, haven't invest, they haven't invested in this yet. Yeah, and drawing a card is always good. Right. And I think you an argument for just, like, holding it. But, like, all right, it's not great right now. Anyway, we, 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 we want to improve it. So, yeah. so we draw a forest and a, a duo. We play uh, planes, and now what? We can play our three drop, or we can play our our duo, and then the three drop is a what? It's trissle down. It's a three three. I think we play probably the probably the three three. I mean, when, and the one drop. Okay, so we can try to get plus one plus one. I think we probably eh the one drop, and then you can play the three drop the next turn. You've got enough to do the pump on it, or do you just get the three three out there? You tell me. You keep you keep asking me, but I want you to tell me, and then yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. And then, and then I think you put the three three out there. Agreed. Yeah, this is not even close. Uh, you cannot you cannot waste two mana this turn. You every mana you waste in the first five turns of the game, unlimited, is like an entire notch down your chance to win the game. Got it. So Nicole, Nicole does that too. I like the, the fishing for. Well, I think we should maybe do this <laughs> right. It's like no, you tell me, and then I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Uh, I like so it. I want I want a committed answer. So. Yeah, so the thing is that this thing, they haven't really put anything into it yet. No, they haven't. Nor have they played a creature. And now they have two equipments in play. But I guess, like, in theory, if they level this up even more, the other equipment's kind of good, too. But, like, yeah. again... Then so they put a 1-4 so we play the land. Right, so this card is not very good, honestly. And the fact that they're red-green means the deck's also pretty bad, too, because, like, these cards don't make a lot of sense in a red-green deck. Yeah. Uh, so, but that, that's more, like, format, more format-specific knowledge. So, yeah. play a land and know it. I think you probably play the... Uh, well, we got the three, the three, three that'll expend for expend four, or we got the, uh, or we got the duo. So what, what do we want to do? I, I, uh, let's look at the duo again real quick. Uh, you, until end of turn, target creature again. Don't have a lot of creatures, so we want to play that later. I think you drop. I think you dropped the uh, the key knot. What should we, what should we do first? What should we do first? Mm -hmm. uh, you play your one drop. What should we do? Attack first? Yeah, always attack. Now, okay. what's going to happen? They're either going to take damage or they're going to block. Right. And how, how are those scenarios for us? We have a pump spell in our hand. Okay. So, great, basically. Yeah. So, you get to untap it. It's a free, it's a free attack, even. So, they can block, and then we'll decide if we're going to cast or not. And we, we actively want to kill their creatures because they have multiple equipments in play. Right? Yep. So, so, the downside here is that we can't play uh, our, our flyer. Which we could do, we could just let this happen and play our, our flyer. I think they think for a second. Um, if unfortunately we also only have two greens, we can't play the curator and the high stride. It it kills their creature, but well, no, it's it's a bounce because it's it's a four four, so it's a free attack. It's just going to bounce. I'm not sure you pump it here and kill. I mean, is their creature that? I mean, they do have equipment they could pump on it. I would. I think we don't pump here. Yeah. So that's, that, that's kind of what I was thinking. I, the, I think you just let it bounce. The opportunity cost of pumping here is not playing a four drop and wasting a bunch of mana, and that's not okay right now, so yeah. it's fine. Also, you have to remember that everything you do in a game, while we're trying to pick up information for our opponent, they're, they're trying to do the same. Right, so we just didn't play a pump spell and block. So obviously we could have just wanted to play a thing. We also paused for a long time too, so like it's a little whatever. But like, you know, if we had just gone attack, they block, and play yeah. our four drop, that might put them on less likely that we have a, a pump spell. Yeah, and then they put out a one three with a double strike, or you had one three double strike fire. That's a yeah, it is pretty good with the uh, with the equipment. So yeah, now it has reach, flying, double strike, vigilance. We draw a rust shield rampager. So now what? Well, we have our. We can block their two, four, our three. We can. We don't need to put anything out for that. Um. This is just where I was. This is where I just don't know what 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 to do here. This is not what, this is just where I would try. I'd probably put the, the key knot out there because we can expend four, but I just, I don't know. So this is where, um, 
you really need to be thinking about your heuristics, like what what are our goals are we trying to do, right? So our attacks are pretty good. This pumps this. So you have a 4-4 four, yep. four and a 3-3 three, three attacking. They, what happens if they block? We're happy, right? Because right. now trading a high stride for a thing they equipped already with a good card is a very, very good outcome for yeah, us. True. So we're very happy with that. So we're trying to stack. And you should basically always, your your number, your, de- your default uh, order operations to be attacking. So, um, it wants up this. In theory, if we knew we were playing high stride, we'd want to untap the other things that's going to tap it anyway. But like, I think this is a more straightforward thing to do. And it makes it less likely we have this or whatever. So sure. They did it. Yeah, we're we'll going to play that. We're going to pump that. Right. So there you go. And now, now their thing dies, our thing lives. Correct. And, and they'll take four. It's important. Because not not only is it about the combat, but like how's damage going? How, you know, chip shot, chip shot, chip shot. When there are 10, things lot different than, than, than 20. So, and now unfortunately we're, we're wasting a mana. We're two mana actually. So we're going to play our duo and say go. Think it to play our four drop. Think it to play our two drop. Oh, we but, could have eaten the food there, but I guess the body's more important. We're going to still. So we'll, we'll turn yeah. it over. Uh, but the important thing is that we uh, we killed a super high quality creature and yep. we're still attacking on board. So they play a mentor. That's pretty good for them. Uh, this is a value creature. It gets bigger every time we target it. Um, but that's fine. This is going to be a 5-4 reach, which is pretty good. It has haste too. So they could attack if they want to. It could be a very, it'd be a pretty bad attack. I don't know. It depends on what they have in their hand, but... And now we have also we've been building up towards our duo attack too. Yes, uh, as vigilance too. Holy shit! Uh, uh, sure. So then also the stacks gets a plus one so. So have a six four reach, vigilance haste. So now what? I'd probably block here with my flyer. I mean, I, I know it gets fire support, but six is a lot to take. I mean, with just the squire. Hmm. With just the squire. I mean, it's it's what else do we have that has? Do we have something else that has reach? Was well, a much better block than that. So it's a, it's not flying; it's reach. Oh, okay. Well, it didn't apply. Yeah. It has reach. Okay, right. the one one then. Well, block. so so I think I think what you're what you're doing now is a very very common like commander mistake. Like you're saying, okay, I'll block, I'll just trump block, whatever. The much better block is double block, right? Okay. We got to trade. They're tapped out. They can't make. Oh, true. Okay, yeah. I, I, like, I, I'm seeing the bigger picture now. Right, and this this isn't a great exchange. We are trading two for one, but. Quality wise, our duo's not very good. The flyers, whatever. This is going to get bigger every single turn and stymies all of our attacks. So if we don't block, what happens next turn? It gets bigger and they hit us again. Right. Also, we can't really attack, like, you yeah. know, because it's, it's huge, just we have to block here. So. Okay. Fair. And our hand's juiced. So. Yeah. Just like his food. But anyway, so. So there you go. So decent, decent exchange. Now we're back to having a 3 3 and a 1 4. It makes our duo worse, which can't mess around them. So you draw a hop to it. Okay, so now what? I'm probably still playing the, uh, well, let's see, we have, how many, we have four mana or five mana? We have four mana. Four. Hop to it, puts more bodies on the board. Um, What's up, Foxy? You're shooting it, folks. My name is Jim. Pro Magic Player, Fallen Content Creators. First, I'm going to say hi. This is Jay. Jay's, Jay's in town hanging out, and we're doing a little, uh, Hey guys, thanks for the raid, Voxy. We did some computer work earlier, and then we're hanging out with Jay doing a coaching right now. So, welcome, happy to have you. I'm probably playing the. Uh, I mean, I've got enough mana to play the. I don't know. This is where I'd start. I'd probably play the three three, but or, or do you play the two? Or do you just get more bodies on board? You play the curator. Yeah. So I think I think that's the worst choice. I think they like it wastes too much mana. I think we should attack. So first thing first, okay. we'll attack. First thing first, attack. Then we decide what we're gonna do. Right. So we'll attack. We could have played duo and pumped it through. See, now, now that's a huge tell from our opponent, right? So they blocked earlier. They played a few creatures. We killed them. Now they didn't block. Why didn't they block? I don't play a 4-4 while we're talking, but why didn't they block there? Because they think because they have something in their hand they think can deal with what we have or they... I think it's less about their hand and more about the board. I'm sorry. It is about their hand, but it's less about what they have, more about what they don't have. Okay. So they leveled up their talent. So the big, the big tell here is that I think they have... Uh, no other creatures. Okay, they, don't have, they just have spells in their hand. And they that are, makes sense? Even though this creature sucks, and it's it's a free block, technically, they have all this equipment, right? Yeah. And they can't do it anyway. They, they don't have a creature in play. So that's pretty telling that they don't have much going on. So uh, they also don't have any lands. So they have four spells in their hand. Probably not a lot of creatures they can play quickly. They did level, so now they have a free equip every turn. And they have a 3-6 Vigilance Reach. So we draw a Nettle Guard, uh, and now we got more choices to make. We could play our duo, which would pump things and make better attacks for us with two other creatures. We have our our little nettle guard there that's uh, 
We don't have any way to... Nettlegar's the one with Valiant, right? Yeah, we don't have any way to target it right now. I think we probably played the duo here. So, options are, I think our options are play duo, a pump, and attack for six. Or play guard and curator and, and wait for next turn. Important to know also that guard can kill equipments. So, like, that could be viable later as well. Hop to it is probably the worst choice. Yeah. Waste man doesn't do that much. So, I think we're two drop, two drop here. I think we can wait for a, a bigger spot with our duo. Okay. And this is a card that gets, it gets better as long as you wait. This game is not ending anytime soon. Uh, so, play business as I go. And then having the, the uh, guard in play with the ability to attack and destroy equipment is a pretty huge thing on the next combat step. So Makes sense. So, they play a land. They just drew that. So, they have four spells in their hand. Um, a lot of scary things can happen here. All right, so, they're going to go beginning combat. So, no, no double strike level. They get a free equip. I mean, it means nothing. They have nothing to equip. If they had a Valiant creature to play, they could like re-Valiant it, but and now they're going to attack. So they're going to have a 4-6 Vigilance Reach coming in to our wall of creatures. What do I do? You, uh, you take four, you double block here and get rid of their creature. Okay, so, I mean... Double block is not necessarily guaranteed to get rid of their creature. Yeah, right? exactly. Because so they, potentially, potentially, they have all open man and they got right, potentially. Card in hand. I just think you probably just take four here. Love it. Know. Yeah, but the, I think the blocking here is extremely risky. Opportunity cost is nothing. We're at 23, no problem. And right now we've got creature instant in the graveyard for curator. There are less types. Also important that if we destroy an artifact, I have a sorcery. That could be a path to getting us to our delirium. No, yeah, because we have that'd be two more types in the graveyard. Yep. So always kind of keeping on things that that might might not matter now. Maybe a few turns from now. And again, it's a lot of it's any really good limited player is just planning a lot, or they're just thinking about the next few turns. How's the game going to end? What do these few turns look like? And that's just a small thing we're going to keep an eye on. Yeah. Right. Is it going to matter next turn? Probably not. But all right. So a weird thing just happened. What just happened? We drew a fight spell or nope. a bite spell. They uh, they passed without playing anything. So do anything, right? So yeah. they so they, they they drew drew a fourth card, said go. They didn't equip. They didn't uh, activate this either. So even if they didn't have this in play and they didn't have a thing they could have spent their mana on, it's still super sketchy. It's even more sketchy with that up. So what does that mean for this turn for us? Probably means they have. Well, if they didn't play anything, they either have some type of spell in their hand they can play, or they got all equipment in their hand they can't do anything with it. Well, they would have put, put equipment, I think. So, right? so yeah. it's basically, what it means is, we're not sure exactly what they have, but tread lightly. Yeah. Uh, again, the rope's going on to talk a little faster. So, but what's all our options? We can attack with everything. We can we can, we can can be a little patient. Even though things are scary, we have two. We have a good spell in our hand. We have a, a no guard that can kill on equipment. I'm going to attack with everything. I think you attack here. Yeah, I yeah. think you attack We could also, here. this will down player is the guard for Valiant, too, which is kind of cool. So, I think we just slam with everything. And again, the goal is not to keep our keen eyed curator alive. The goal is not to, you know, not get blown out. The goal is to win the game. Right. So even if they block and kill a thing here, it's, 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 it's like seven, which is pretty good. We have possible retrick. We can kill an equipment on the way out. We can play, we play hop, if you go hop to it, and then we play the duo next turn. That's really good too. So if it's starting to just like sack metal guard, kill an equipment, get it for seven, play hop to it, that's still a good turn. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And again, I'm, I, I, I will state that like I don't think my analysis is like a thousand percent right now because I am talking a lot and trying to talk to talk through whatever the rope is going or whatever. So, uh, you know, we're close here, but uh, not perfect. Chat, feel free to pick me yeah. apart if you want. But oh, they're in the tank too, geez. So a little mild mild sub synergy in, with our deck where the player system isn't that good in our deck. We do have a few mice for the valiant thing, so there's a little extra value here, which is cool. And making this into a 4-4 four, four is pretty cool. Or a 3-3, yeah. three, three, I'm sorry. Yeah, they are really in a tank. I honestly hope they did disconnect because it's been a really interesting game. And <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious to see what they have here because it's like, well, all right, well, you... Yeah, said go, uh, so. they might have disconnected because they're easing. And I don't know how you'd be this in the tank already, so they might have disconnected. Right, it's, it's a weird spot to be in a tank because, like, you want to see them an attack first, typically, but we'll see. Grand Moth Tarkin is calling Conduct Electricity, which is a five mana common deal six spell. Do you think the opponent didn't bother with the talent because we have a Nettle Guard out to destroy it? No. I think we're much more likely to destroy the equipment. And no, like, I'm just saying Chad asked that question. Yeah, and I'm answering. Out, yeah. I think it's like, that's like kind of ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, they decided to be in... All right, so here we go. 
Oh, they, they just they just hide. That's man, what a bummer. Yeah, that is a bummer. I want to know what they had. You know, like I think we were ahead that game. You know, and I think that um, you know, they had a removal spell or a trick, maybe sure. But like, I think that like our attack here, if things go horribly wrong, they put the herbalist on the three three curator, and they play our removal spell and kill our four four. Okay, it takes six. They go to what, like seven? I think it was. Yeah. And we go hop to it, and the guard also kills a thing maybe. And then we just have too much tokens to play, play the duo next turn. Sure, is what it is. But yeah, that is what it is. Yep. So, uh, for the YouTube folks, I'm going to call them in a cannon here. Uh, this is already a really long video, about two hours now. So, uh, I guess I'll let you know at the end uh, how we did. I guess I, I can come back at the end. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. But um, stream folks are to keep going, obviously. But for YouTube folks, uh, yeah, we'll come back. All right, so hop back in here on YouTube, uh, wrap up. We're 4 3. Uh, that wasn't great. We lost some tough ones, honestly. And we don't really draw rares that much. Like, this is like the possible nut draw of like Mike Crawler into Phineas into Hop to it. Never came even close doing that. Uh, but deck was okay. It wasn't great. Um, honestly, I don't really identify like a spot in the draft. We like got off our lane. We just kind of like ended up short a few playables. Uh, but yeah, so. I think the net did good for what it was. What's your what's your what's your overall takeaway? So from, at the, the coaching session is over. You're walking out the door. What's your one takeaway? That limited is. Uh, limited is hard, but uh, it's, it's a agreed. fun it's a fun format. And it's definitely something I want to get more into and, and and play more. Any lesson you like you're taking away from this? Like, what's the one thing you like learned? How to better evaluate cards in 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 the draft portion. How to look at how to look at and, and look at things from the bigger picture. Not look at like you said several times. Not play one turn ahead, but look two three turns ahead. Right. I think that's the biggest thing as a commander player. Like you said, got in this got in this. Blinds of this play affects how now, but not realizing what two or three plays down could do. Right, three, 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 three turns later. Three turns later in a commander game is like an hour and a half, so uh, yeah. it's a long way away. But cool. All right, so you two folks, I'll be like, comment, subscribe, and your thoughts on this, and uh, peace. Oh, see you later.